Connecticut territory. So Brian Rock is well aware that Big 93 is no longer in the middle of that defense. And they went right after 94, Kevin Murphy, a 6'1", 280-pound sophomore. He gets double teamed at the point of attack and pushed back about three yards. He's going to have to get in this game and be stout quickly. Second and seven. Play clock down to 10. Here comes pressure up the middle. It's picked up. Tipped in the air and incomplete. So that'll bring up a third and seven. Let's check in with Taylor Rooks. Thanks, Amy. You know, Ed was talking about this 3-3-5 defense and how one of the most important things to make it work is depth. So losing a guy could prove costly, but, you know, he said it's hard to recruit defensive linemen. There's not as many of them, but it is easier to find three than four. So using this defense creates some doubt for their opponent, asking them the question, you know, what are they going to bring next? So they'll have to make some adjustments, losing one of their best defensive guys on that side of the ball. Right now it's number 50, Sheridan Lawley in the middle of that defensive line. Third and seven. Here comes pressure off the edge. Pulios finds his man for a first down. Good coverage by Bryce McAllister. But it doesn't matter. As Di Nicola, the veteran out of Florida, makes the grab. And here comes the pace for Holy Cross. Now how about this up. formation? They got the lineman all the way out here, lined up as a wide receiver. But they throw away from there where they got Jimmy Murray on the other side. Well read by Cam Stapleton and the Huskies. So a play Andy Grush must love with the big uglies lined up wide out as wideouts. Oh, and here comes the full-fledged swinging gate to the right-hand side. The offensive line all the way to the right. Now Puyos has a man wide open. Again, it's Di Nicola right at the marker. Summers with the tackle, but a flag down. So did they have an another man downfield with all those linemen lined up? Puyos again lobbying the case for Holy Cross. Tougher to line up further away from the football when you're a big body. It's that simple. Here it is at the uh, at the snap, and let's take a look. We got one, two, three. Ineligible downfield. Offense number seventy. Five yard penalty. Second down. So it's Jackson Dennis. So that wipes out a Holy Cross first down. So Tom Gilmore and his offense coordinator Brian Rock maybe outsmarted his own players there with that exotic formation right and the thing that i was doing was counting the guys on the line of scrimmage and seeing if that was an issue you know sometimes when you want to create chaos you got to make sure you have all 11 guys on the field that can handle when you're trying to create chaos second crusader first down wiped out by an ineligible man downfield penalty so that makes it second and 13 from the connecticut 45. now they run a reverse Di Nicola. Gets a block on the outside. Summers forces him out of bounds. It looked like Holy Cross might have been called for a hold there, but they let it go. Ormsby had the penetration, but Nina Cola had the speed to get to the outside. Check out uh, 57 Cole Ormsby. Watch him come up the field here on this reverse. It forces the receiver, the runner, excuse me, to take a wider route and allowed Summers to get him out of bounds. Third and eight. Husky fans making some noise. Pulios thrown to the ground as he gets rid of it, incomplete. So now decision time for Tom Gilmore. And he's keeping his offense out there. Luke Carrizola gets home to Peter Pujols, but watch at the end, you can see. Ooh, that absolutely. While, yeah, they were trying to, meaning Pujols and head coach Tom Gilmore were really working the white hat to try to get a call right there for the old horse collar. Horse collar and the uh, forearm to the head as well. So fourth and eight. Here's the noise Randy Edsel was looking for. If you're Three on the play clock. They get it off. Pressure. The screen is there. First down and then some. A well-designed screen to Jordan Montgomery. So Brian Rock, the offense coordinator, rolls the dice. And the Crusaders like it. Eamon, right when you said three on the play clock, clock I thought, oh, you know, either a timeout or 
We were going to see a pooch punt, and instead, Pujols gets him into a great play. Look at all of the white on blue down the field for Holy Cross. That's what you can do when you have an experienced quarterback who knows the offense inside and out. Just enough speed to get away from Trey Bell on that wide receiver screen. So now it's first and 10 from the Husky 25. Again, Pujols milking the play clock. Open again is Dorsey, makes the first man miss and gets a first down. So good moves after the grab by Martin Dorsey, junior out of Wayne, Pennsylvania. Pujols, great protection in the pocket right there. Three wide receivers to that side. He picks the middle and does a good job of just moving this ball down the field. Five first downs already for Holy Cross. Tenth play of the drive here for the Crusaders. Again, it was kept alive on a fourth and eight. Conversion. Now they give it to Walker to the left. Cam Stapleton with the tackle. Stapleton, a 50-year senior out of Poly Prep in Brooklyn. This is what happens when you lose an Outland Trophy watch list candidate and a Gursky candidate and Foley Foltikasi. You need other defensive linemen to step up. You go from having a 320 pounder in the middle to about a 285 pounder in Kevin Murphy and Ormsby and Carrizola respectively aren't 290 pound beefers. And right now, Holy Cross is pushing around this UConn defense. Bunch set close to the line for the Crusaders. Under four and a half to play in the quarter. Play fake to Walker. Here comes pressure. Hit as he throws into the end zone. Knocked away. Tyler Coyle over the middle. Dangerous throw by the veteran Pujols. Let's see what it was like for Peter Pujols right here. I mean, that's just a free rusher coming to hit him. The back looked like he went the wrong way and then trying to throw it to the tight end down the seam. Very dangerous. Tyler Coyle almost coming up with a pick right there. Third and nine. Not a lot of experience in the kicking game for Holy Cross, so they might be going for it again on fourth down, but they're looking to get it here on third. Walker picks up the blitz. It's caught, but shy of a first down. Di Nicola makes the grab. So now Tom Gilmore has to make another decision on this drive. Wow, Chris Britton was right there. And a fantastic job there by Richie Di Nicola pulling that football in. Britton was there to contest it. Di Nicola, that's a big catch. The go-to guy for Holy Cross. When Peter Pugliels needs something, he turns to Di Nicola. 49 catches a year ago, so they're going to go for the points. A.J. Wells on for a 25-yarder. And it's good. So Holy Cross breaks through first and gets on the board. The big play, the fourth and eight conversion. It's Holy Cross three, Connecticut nothing. A.J. Wells delivers the points, but it was the arm of Peter Pulios and his decision-making that kept that drive alive. Well, you look at fourth and eight, and they go for it around the 40-yard line. And I want you to see, talking about getting into the right play, look at the, all those offensive linemen that are on the 38-yard line, and there were only two UConn defenders in the secondary. Looking at it, probably should have gone for a touchdown, but great hustle from behind for the rest of this UConn defense. Without that play, they don't get that 25-yard field goal in the 3-0 lead. Is it going to be on the jumbo time? No, it's just on Cody Wilkinson on to kick off. This one, my elbow, you watch it. I texted like three people. Jordan Swan, the freshman out of Baltimore, hoping to get his hands on it for a return. Kick. Oh, he's going to bring it out. So the freshman living on the edge, and he makes a good decision. That's a good decision if you get across the 25. <laughs> and there certainly you go. the fans here are looking for some electricity in the kick return game. Yeah, I got nervous there because that was more than five yards deep, but Jordan Swan just hits it right up in there, almost makes it to the kicker, which is what you're really looking for, an athlete on a kicker. Sorry, kickers, but... <laughs> You'll take the returner every time in that matchup and some pretty good field position and a little electricity for UConn. There you see how young they are in special teams, and the head coach certainly found them right away for a quick message. Now Pindell. 
It's complete. Keon Dixon. So not a whole lot of experience in this wide receiving course. So the redshirt freshman from down the road in Glastonbury makes the grab there. Six-yard pickup. Now Pindell keeps it himself. Tripped up just shy of the first down. Aleem Muhammad bringing him down. And you knew it was a matter of time before that defensive end was going to chase and David Pindell was going to get the football in his hands to run it. So they give him the first down. Ahmad Tyler also in on the play. Now Connecticut going quickly, looking to get in the rhythm. Here's Newsom. Cannot get away from Ryan Brady, who's having a whale of an opening quarter here on the road against Connecticut. Just too much penetration right now. There are too many white jerseys in the backfield. Look at this. Look how many white jerseys are hovering right around the line of scrimmage to be able to make tackles on either side. Now they empty the backfield pressure up the middle. They get the screen to Mayala, and he's in the open field. Into Holy Cross territory. Brady finally brings him down, but Herji Mayala with some shake and bake. He's a footstep away from taking that one to the house. Instead, it's an 18-yard gain, but first and 10 in the Holy Cross 42 as the Huskies are on the move. Back to Newsom. They cannot get away from Andre Chevalier, and they are very high on the junior out of West Hills, California, and what he brings to the table for this defense. I thought Chevalier there for a second might have been around the face mask, but a good job on the tackle there from Chevalier, uh, described as the tone setter on this Holy Cross defense. When they watch films in the defensive room, the coaches normally stop and say, how come not? How come everyone isn't going as fast as number 34? Jet sweep here. This is Keon Dixon again, and he gets the first down. So the local kid making an impact on this drive. Nice block there by Arkel Newsom, put in a situation to where he's got a block on that jet sweep. Nice job, just being competitive. Here comes pressure from Holy Cross. Pindell gets rid of it. Nice move by Mayala. He got away from the first tackler, but then dropped by Macbeth and company. Pick up a six. Mayala much better after the catch this year than last year. Pindell, 8 of 9 already, and he keeps it himself right up the middle. Inside the 15 and a late flag. World-class flag throw there from the back judge, too. That thing was 25 in the air. James Downey with the arm. Illegal block in the back. Offense, number nine, 10-yard penalty, second down. So that call goes against Tyler Davis. Randy Edsel looking for an explanation. And it, unfortunately for the coach and the fans, it really didn't look like it was anywhere near the play. Well, Tyler Davis is one of these guys at 6'4", 235, where he's kind of like a fullback, and he's a little bit like a tight end, but he's not really a wide receiver. But he's a big guy who can block on the outside, and we take a look at it. Ooh. Oh, yeah, very much closer to the play than I thought, so obviously. But not much contact either. I mean, that was a heck of an acting job. It, it wasn't a big-time push. I don't know. That's offensive bias up here in the booth. Now Pindell looking to throw, and he has his man Alec Blue. Yes, Connecticut, the tight end is still allowed in college football. It's my, it's my guys right there. The tight ends, Alec Bloom, Tommy Myers. These guys need the football across the formation. Slides right out. Nice shot by Pindell. And then that's a full speed 6'6", 250-pound man. And they try to go quick, but a legal procedure, so flag will back them up five Ball yards. Start. Offense, number nine, five-yard penalty, first down. Tyler Davis not having a drive to remember here. But the Huskies will still be in good shape. Certainly Pindell very accurate so far in his first career start with the Huskies. Biggest thing it stands out, knows where he's going with the football. There's been no indecision. When David Pindell's throwing it, it's out of his hands quickly. Tenth play of the drive. It started after that impressive kickoff return by the freshman. Now they give it to Hopkins. He gets to the outside. Inside the five, and he will score. 
The first career touchdown for Nate Hopkins gives the Huskies the lead. Left side of this offensive line doing a really good job of securing the edge. Look at 65, Matt Parrott right there with a great job on the hook of the edge. And then Hopkins does the rest, getting around the corner. Shaky at times, Eamon, as they pick up the pace, but fighting through the penalties to get into the end zone. So Michael Tarbit on for the extra point. It's good. So an offense that at one point last year went more than 50 drives without a touchdown has an impressive drive here in the opener. And they press on the accelerator. Good kick out block. Matt Parrott, what a great job with his feet. Initially working outside. Then he turns the defender inside. And then look at Hopkins run through the contact there. You know, if you're going to run the ball outside, you need your wide receivers to chip in in terms of getting a body on a body. And UConn gets that. 10 plays, 71 yards, and a touchdown at the rent. The fans are happy, and in the first quarter. Well, again, it was a very impressive drive that was given a spark right off the bat from Jordan Swan off the kickoff return. You know, Amy, people may be thinking, okay, Please you know, you're- the game clock to 10 seconds. 10 seconds on the game clock. It, it's the whole, Thank you're you. really selling that first quarter. UConn scored nine first quarter points all last season. That's why it's a big deal. And a reminder, you can stay on top of all things Connecticut with up-to-the-minute Husky news, game recaps, press conferences, and exclusive interviews on SNYUConn.com. Presented by Mercedes-Benz, part of the SNY.TV blog network. Are you a blogger? Have you added that to the resume yet? <laughs> There's anything and everything on that resume. <laughs> you got to buy milk. You got to pay for summer camps, whatever. <laughs> so Tarbit on to kick it off. Good student turnout. Classes started on Monday. Good to see the kids making the trip up to Pratt and Whitney Stadium. will be Muhammad who drops it and he takes a knee for the touchback so the senior making a veteran decision and now it's the veteran quarterback looking to answer and he'll please reset the game clock to seven seconds seven seconds, seven seconds in seconds. one play here at the end of the first quarter before we go the other way so you talked to Tom Gilmore about the significance of playing against an FBS opponent for the first time in 15 years, and he didn't, you know, sugarcoat it all. He said, look, this is a big deal to go down to Connecticut and play a team that we used to play all the time, a New England rival, be on TV. They're going to play Boston College next year. So the Holy Cross leads the series, but it's been a while since they played. The lock bomb days. Good grief. Long time ago, even before my time, and I'm old. Can't get through a Holy Cross game on TV without mentioning Gordy Lockbaum, a Heisman Trophy finalist in 86 and 87, when you two way put, player. When you put that into perspective, an FCS player at the time, a Heisman candidate, that's amazing. And they're going to run it. That's Kojir. And he gets out to about the 28 for a pickup of. We'll call it four. So it'll be a second and six for the Crusaders when we return for the second quarter. The second Randy Etzel era is underway, and after a slow start, the offense broke through, and the Huskies have the lead. We're back to the rent after this. During our from the start of the second quarter, Connecticut leads Holy Cross 7-3. Let's check in with Taylor down on the field. And if you can see the shirt that I'm wearing, it says it's earned and not given. And every single player on the UConn football team has one of these shirts. They also have wristbands. It's a team mantra. All the players came up with it, and they said, you know what? We're UConn. We have to come out. We have to earn our respect. Nobody's just going to freely give it to us. We have to show them we work hard, that we put the effort in every single day. They say it in their huddle. They were saying it out of the tunnel. It's the thing that is really carrying them through this season. It's been the theme of this year so far, guys. All right, Taylor, I just want to let you know I'm a large, Andy's an extra large, Jordan and Steve, our stats and spotter, are large. Kathy, our stage manager, says she's a small. 
So you got those orders in? I got you after the game. <laughs> All right, Puyos on the rollout. Low throw, incomplete. Looking for Richie DiNicola. Now, if you're just joining us, a major development for Randy Edsel's defense on the draw. Last drive, Foley Fotokasi ejected with targeting, and Vontae Diggs, the leading tackler from last year, already out with a knee injury. Yeah, another EJ Levenberry, another linebacker that's out, but you see Fotokasi, and more importantly, when you're running a 3 3 5 defense, the nose tackle is critical. That was Fotokasi's position. You take a Nagurski candidate out of the lineup. So now, third and six for the Crusaders from their own 29. Complete to Dino Cola for a first down. Out across the 40. Tackled by Junior Joseph, but the Crusaders keep the drive going. 13-yard pickup by the veteran wide receiver out of Florida. Well, if you're UConn, you got to start paying attention to 83 here. They drop back in his own defense. And a great job by Puyols to getting it to Dino Cola. You could tell there's some real kismet there between those two. There's Walker cutting up field. Stop shy of the 45 out to the 44. So a short gain on first down. Making Kozier on the carry. Number one. Sophomore out of Massachusetts. Yeah, even for as much as we talked about the offense, the defense has to grow into a new scheme as well. These just might be some growing pains that UConn's going. So now Kevin Murphy, the redshirt sophomore out of Westchester, Pennsylvania, at the nose, bringing the heat right there, forcing an early throw. So Blaze Bell, the wide receiver, but Puglio slow to get up after getting popped by the redshirt sophomore Kevin Murphy. So now it'll be third and long. Get low and move onward. 94 right over the football. Boy, he just tosses the center. 66, Nick Piker right out of the way. So Di Nicola in the slot. That's been his money man so far here on third down. Third and nine. Dorsey to the left. Bottom of your screen. Here comes pressure from Connecticut. Pulios. Cannot hook up with Jordan Montgomery, incomplete. The Crusaders will be forced to punt. Pre-snap, they made this very difficult for Peter Pouyos to know where to go with the football. So he goes outside man-to-man, -man, and that's Jamar Summers out there. Football nowhere in the neighborhood. No window for Pouyos to squeeze the ball in. Great disguise, good look, good job by the UConn defense. So now McGrail on the punt. Sends Swan back inside the 15. No fair catch signal, and he got drilled. Akeem Walcott getting down there in a hurry, and the freshman might learn that you're allowed to fair catch. Big hit by the Crusaders in punt coverage. UConn ball after this. Back here at UConn, the Huskies lead Holy Cross 7-3 with 13 minutes and 35 seconds left to go in the first half. And in support of the relief efforts for Hurricane Harvey in the Gulf Coast, the American Athletic Conference will make a $100,000 donation to the American Red Cross. And we encourage you to join in the effort. To donate, visit www.redcross.com slash donate or call 1-800-HELP-NOW. To make an immediate $10 donation, text Harvey to 90999. And I know, Andy, you spoke to Commissioner Mike Oresco yesterday, and certainly Houston, in everyone's thoughts, but a member of the American Athletic Conference. Yeah, uh, theamerican.org, their website, there's a link on there to donate as well. And, of course, the Houston game canceled this week. So Pindell swings it out. Nice play there by Quavon Skeins. Makes the first tackler miss. They think this is a guy who has some big play capability, redshirt freshman out of Chicago. Remember when Bob Diaco got him out of Chicago last year, he couldn't have been more excited. Fidel keeps it himself, gets the first down. Gets out across the 30, ball comes loose. Crusaders say they have it, and they do. Holy cross ball. Macbeth with the recovery. Let's see, was he down? Nope, that's a fumble. That ball is clearly out. Got a little loose and away from David Pindell. Got to hold on to the pill. Phil Zobrist 
the senior forcing the fumble and Macbeth coming up with the recovery but a quick development even though there was the fumble and a great job by Macbeth in getting that football you had a safety flying up to try to make that play UConn with the quarterback run in that zone read they're starting to make some gains Pindell got down the field defensively Holy Cross has got to get that short up Taylor Amen. Right before the series, Rhett Lashley told David Pendell to work on his ball security and be wary of how he held the ball. You see that he did it right there, and it proved costly for them. Billy Crocker just told his team that Coley Cross cannot run the ball. They just have to be good against the pass, and they'll win this game. So to keep going after the quarterback, and it will all work itself out, guys. All right there, they tried to run it, and the front was ready for it as they ran it with Miles Alexander. But let's take another look at that fumble. Well, you combine it with Jordan Swan, the freshman who decides to not fair catch the, the punt, and he gets knocked backwards a little bit. David Pendell, bare minimum, he's got to get it to the other side because get it to the outside, there are less defenders near the sideline when you're holding the football on the run. So it'll be interesting to see if Brian Rock and Holy Cross commit to the run or if they, as Taylor said, UConn can't. UConn stopping them up front if they turn this into a pass-happy game. Second and ten, five seconds left on the play clock. Julio's quick release on the slant, hooks up with Dorsey. Incomplete. So the hit jars it loose at the last second. Summers had the coverage. Now another third and long for Puyos and this Holy Cross offense. And even if the slant is there, you want to take it away, start to lay the Ooh. lever, and that's a big hit right there by Junior Joseph on Martin Dorsey. You keep doing that, then you'll get some tiptoes on that slant route. They're lucky Joseph is still playing on this play because that certainly looked like a high hit that might have been looked at, but instead third and ten for the Crusaders. Here comes pressure. Picked up. They go to Di Nicola, makes a grab. Cannot break a tackle. So it'll be at about a fourth and six for Coach Gilmore. Nice work there by 41 Marche Terry, who's one of the backup safeties. And Holy Cross is going quick on fourth down. On the rollout. Pumps it. First down. Nice grab. Nice way to stay in bounds. Jordan Montgomery. This is all Pujols right here. He had the short throw to the flat for the first down. Instead, he saw the one-on-one -on -one coverage at the second level. Knew Montgomery was going to come back and hitch it up. That's a fantastic job by Peter Pujols right there. 10 of 18, 98 yards. He's played way above those numbers to this point. We're going to put it all on Peter. That's what Brian Rock told us, and he keeps that drive out live with the conversion on fourth down second time they've converted on fourth down now he gets rid of it quickly that's the miles alexander sophomore out of overland park kansas and look puyos isn't just good for the patriot league they've had nfl scouts yeah. in and out of worcester all summer long he, he, right in the face of the blitz right there guy bearing down on him he doesn't matter he's going to throw it right by him because it's the right throw and he's unafraid to let it loose and take contact. 50-year senior out of Loyola Academy in the Chicago suburbs. As Andy mentioned in the open, a four-year captain. So now two backs in the backfield for Puyos. Hooks up. Blaze Bell makes the grab. Well, Puyos is dialed in right now. They give a run look up front, and then that's just a simple little out route. 16, Jordan Montgomery with the runoff. Lays Bell underneath on the out route. Pretty stuff. McAllister keeps him out of the end zone, but now it's first and goal for the visitors from Worcester, Mass. Walker and Guild in the backfield, twins to the right. Puyos. On the fade, has his man open, flag. Multiple flags. I wonder if this could be offensive pass interference on the wide receiver who went across the middle. And it is. Pass interference, offense, number 16, 15-yard penalty, first down. You can pick your friends, you can pick your nose, but you can't pick a defender lined up in the slot. 
And that's exactly what happened right there. Another great flag throw by the official. And you can see it coming man to man. Honestly, Eamon, I thought they were gonna do the same thing they did down here. Run 16 off, have five run the out underneath. Instead, you got him can't be as can't be as open about setting the pick as Montgomery was right there. Somewhere down in Birmingham and Tuscaloosa, there are fans watching this on their satellite saying, you know, if you called that in the national championship game, we might still be playing. <laughs> That's right. Play fake. Pujols has his man open. Touchdown, Blaze Bell. So Pujols and the Crusaders respond. What a great fake by Peter Pujols. Wizardry. Saw it the whole time. Knew he was going to get the look that he wanted to get the ball to Blaze Bell. And just a great job of selling that run fake before pulling it back up and delivering the football. So now Wells on for the extra point. Movement. Flag on the play. Was UConn drawn off or did they jump? Offside, defense, number 10, penalties decline, try is good. So, Huss, so Holy Cross regains the lead 10 to 7. Fantastic job by Peter Pulios to get the ball to Blaze Bell. Look at this play fake. He's staring him down, knew where he was going with the football, and the Crusaders have a lead on UConn at Pratt & Whitney Stadium. Holy Cross coaches told us they were coming down here to win, and they regained the lead 10 to 7 on another touchdown pass by Puglia. Look at the safety, number 25, Tyler Coyle. He's lined up on the 10 yard line. As we let this go, watch what the play fake does to him. We let it go a little bit, see him creeping, creeping, and then he's committed to the run, and that allows Bell right behind him. Easy peasy touchdown right there for Peter Puglia's. Beat him with the play fake, get the safety out of position throw a dart. That's exactly what this talented Holy Cross quarterback did right there. Blaze Bell beats Trey Bell for the touchdown for Holy Cross. So now Jordan Swan's been living on the edge in the return game. It worked out okay on the kickoff return. The last punt return not so great as he got his bell rung and was lucky to hold on to the ball. Let's see how cautious or conservative he is here on this return. try to kick it away from them and they do. So returned out across the 25 by J Jason Thompson. And now it's time for tonight's trivia question presented by UConn Health. The Huskies have 27 players from Connecticut. Which two states provide the second most players? We'll give you the answer later this quarter. Now, we specifically said states, because that could be a trick question if we threw in province there, because there are several players on the Connecticut roster from Canada. That you're killing me. I am. Well, I just okay. want, to make, I want to make you think, Andy. Wow. If you were a game show host, Can I please? people would boo you. I, wouldn't that be awesome, though? Have the long microphone, Gene Raber. Newsom hit behind the line of scrimmage for a loss. Well, right now, this UConn offensive line Eamon has not set the tone at all when they picked up the pace. They've been okay, but when it's come to the run game, other than the couple of runs by Pindell, nothing between the tackles. You heard Taylor say the UConn defensive coaches don't think Holy Cross can run on them. Right now, Connecticut has been unable to run on Holy Cross, so it could be a game of quarterbacks. Here comes pressure on the screen, and it's loose. Incomplete. <laughs> At the jailbreak blitz called against the screen. Well, they did, and it was a double screen because watch the hot come off the corner, and then David Pendell knows I can go backside, so he goes away from the hot blitzer, tries to set up the screen to no avail. So now third and 13 from the Connecticut 25. Thompson in the backfield with Pendell. Twins to both sides. Holy Cross brings three. Pendell with time, looking for the deep ball. In the double coverage, and it's knocked away at the last second. No flag. Good coverage by Ahmad Tyler. 
don't know if that's where David Pindell was to go with the football because it looked like Quavon Skeins in the slot might have had a beat over the middle of the field. Big contact right there. Boy, big contact on Pindell. You see, he threw it to the, there was a corner and a safety there. That tells me he threw it to the wrong guy. Looks like that's what he's being told right there, but Phil Zobers has already forced the fumble, bringing the heat on that play. Dean Nicole is going to let it sail out of bounds, so the Crusaders will take over. Let's see. Good field position all the way out to their own 38. So let's see what Pouliot and the Holy Cross offense has up their sleeve here as they have the ball in a three-point lead on the road against Connecticut. Now again, remember, Foley Fadukasi, the veteran defensive lineman, has been ejected from this game for a targeting call back in the first quarter when he hit Puyos high in the head. Yeah, you can see crown of the helmet right to the dome of the quarterback. Not allowed to do that anymore in college football. And you can see Randy Etzel basically telling him, you're gone, you got to go to the locker room. Fotokasi has changed up, and you see him right there on the sideline supporting his teammates. But when you take a guy on the Outland and Nagurski watch, watch list out of the lineup, it's a big deal. Trips to the right. Guild in the backfield. We have not seen a whole lot of Gabe Guild here. And they're going to throw it here. All the way out to Jordan Montgomery. He's brought down at the 45. Coaches told us Jordan Montgomery had a great camp, and they weren't lying. They had been looking for number 16 early and often in this game. Well, and, and something that we're noticing here is that watch six, the quarterback, Peter Pugliels, operate. He's so calm in there directing this offense. Play fake, here comes pressure, and he gets away. Able to make something out of that. And it looked like he was for sure going to be wrapped up for a loss, and now we have a Husky slow to get up in the backfield, and that looks like Luke Carrizola. So already no Fotokasi. Certainly can't afford to lose another veteran on that defensive line. Let's take a look at what happened to Carrizola, the senior. Kind of a defensive end, Ooh. hybrid, yeah. Boy, that ain't good. Yeah, it's Brenton coming in from the other side. Totally inadvertent. He's just chasing the play. Boy, that could have been a lot worse as Carazola just jogged off the field. So Puglios able to pick up a few yards, makes it a third and one. And notice Randy Etzel, by the way, working the official in the white. A new rule now in college football where if you step on the field, they can ding you for 15 yards. So he'll be hoarse by the end of the night, screaming at officials. Twins to the far side on third and short. The Husky fans start to make some noise. They run it to the left, and Walker has a first down into Husky territory. Daquan Walker, senior out of Clearwater, Florida. So that's twice now when a UConn defensive lineman has come out of the game, run to that side, Carrizola comes out of the game, they attack what is the right side of the defense, and a great job by Brian Rocks, offensive coordinator for Holy Cross. Carrizola back out there, so a good sign for the Huskies. Now the wide receiver screen to Dina Cole, cannot get away from Watkins. Anthony Watkins with a good open field tackle, but another positive play for the Crusaders. And Eamon, if he doesn't make that tackle, that thing's got a chance to bounce to the outside. They set up that screen once again. He comes underneath the blockers. They did have some bodies there, but get him down a heck of a lot quicker and behind those linemen. Great job by Anthony Watkins, who plays this hybrid safety linebacker role in this 3-3-5. Ryan Rock told us we're going to put the ball in our playmakers' hands, and that has been the M.O. on this drive, and that is picked off. No, the dropped at the last second. Terry had in his hands. It's an incomplete pass, third down. Marche Terry did everything but bring it in. Boy, and those are killers because not only does he get his hands on it, one of the rare bad throws by Peter Pouliols tonight, but you're talking about a massive amount of field position right there. Would have had the ball around the 35-yard line. Now with Peter Pouliols just playing his tail off tonight, who knows what's going to happen. Certainly the way Holy Cross has been going, 
This is four down territory, so the Crusader fans can breathe a sigh of relief up the road in Worcester, and now the head coach wants to take a timeout to talk it over on third and five. Timeout. Holy Cross. Their second charge, timeout. Puyos, very lucky to face a third and five instead of having to make a tackle. We're back after this. Duncan. Hoppus, Holy Cross has the ball in his territory, third and five, and the answer to the trivia question, which two states provide the second most players? The answer, Pennsylvania and New Jersey with nine apiece. Nine apiece. Marche Terry, who just had a chance at an interception from Columbus, New Jersey, North Burlington High School. And the wild card was indeed Canada with five, so I was close. Nice to see that America's hat is contributing to UConn football. Both cornerbacks, Trey Bell and Jamar Summers, out of New Jersey, so they might be tested on this play on third and five as Holy Cross has an empty backfield. Twins to both sides. Di Nicola, 83 and white, has been his security blanket in these situations. Instead, it's a, there he is, wide open for the first down. Spin move for an extra yard. Bryce McAllister with the tackle. But another first down hookup. Puyos to Di Nicola. And as they advance into Yukon territory, you could see not a lot of pressure by just bringing a normal three or four guys. So Billy Crocker, the Yukon defensive coordinator, is going to have to make a decision here. Can I trust the back end to bring a little pressure to make it more difficult on Puyos? Di Nicola, six grabs. Puyos, nine completions, 85 yards and a touchdown. Here comes pressure up the middle. Has his man open. It's Bell again. He got by Watkins. And again, you see the poise and composure, the pressure coming, does not rattle the veteran quarterback. Not at all. You can tell he's played a ton of football games. Watch six in the pocket right here, looking down the field. He never looked at the defender once. Always down the field, and a nice shot by Blaze Bell to kind of bend that route up behind Watkins. Pump fake now. Gill going the other way. Gets a block on the outside, gets inside the 10. Good work, good work, good work, good work, so good work. They snuffed that one out after it looked like he had an alleyway to the end zone. Sure did. Tight end Jake Simhauser bent back around, meaning he turned around to pick off an inside defender, and I thought, uh-oh, that thing's going to a house. But the second and third levels of the UConn defense doing a fantastic job of closing on the runner. Tyler Coyle, the redshirt freshman out of nearby Windsor, Connecticut, making the tackle. Second and seven. Wins to the right, Bell to the short side, bottom of your screen. They go to Guild up the middle. He gets inside the five, where he meets Coyle again. Now they can get a first down without scoring here as it's third and short, tenth play of the drive. Left side of this Holy Cross offensive line doing the job. Fantastic work by the center, Nick Piker, the left tackle, James Murray, all those guys pushing bodies out of the way. They've been really good up front this first half. Four of nine on third down. Puyos has done most of his damage on fourth down. He's hoping not to face a fourth down conversion on this drive. Keeps it himself. Hit as he throws. Looked like he was going to run it on the draw, but Britton bringing the heat. And they're going to settle for a field goal. Puyol's upset at himself. There's the pressure. Chris Britton untouched up the middle of the field. There really was no one open in the end zone, though. Well defended by the back end of this UConn defense, and it always helps when you get a free rusher to the quarterback. When we're this close to New Britain, can't you say hard hitting Chris Britton? I mean, don't, isn't that sort of required? Boy, well, oh boy. Too easy? Too easy. Oh, okay. Still good. And the Crusaders settle for three, but they tack on points on the road. Another field goal for Wells. A 20-yarder. Randy Edsel's team down by six, but he's happy that they forced the field goal. Coming up, get all of your first half highlights and analysis, plus a complete first half breakdown on the UConn Football Halftime Show. Coming up only on SNY. Larry Ridley and Sean Mulcahy standing by in our studios to bring you that. That would be Middle Tennessee State's Larry Ridley, please. Show the man the proper respect. And Connecticut I know Mulcahy played as well, but still. Sean Mulcahy. 
MLK was kind of uh, joking it up with uh, Randy Etzel on the phone this week. Well, when the coach can't make you run, you can joke it up. Well, there right? you go. That's exactly yes! when there's nothing called Dawn Patrol. Shermel K and the Riddler know about that. But a big win for this UConn defense right there in just giving up a field goal. Holy Cross has moved the ball really well, and Peter Pugliol has been fantastic in this first half. And David Pindell, who you see right there, his fumble was very costly, but all is not lost. UConn's hanging in there defensively against a really good quarterback. Pugliol's ability to move the football has kind of made Pindell a bystander here in the second quarter. Holy Cross has run 24 plays to the Huskies' five. But certainly plenty of time here left in the first half for UConn and Pindell to go on a drive and regain the lead. This one's returnable from, for Swan from the five. Cannot get away. Good tackle and special teams. There's a flag all the way back where Holy Cross kicked it, so we could be doing this all over again. Holy Cross offsides will be the call. Offside, kicking team, number 81, five-yard penalty, free kick. Correction, that number was 82. The number 82. Boy, just a hair over the yard line it needs to be and I like this from UConn by the way make them kick it over again because now that football is going to get pushed back and you've got young dynamic returners that you think have the ability to make big plays for you make them kick it and cover it again okay and the other thing too Heyman it's one of the few things that quite honestly no one can practice in college football anymore you're not allowed to hit during the week because you know that's a terrible thing now and you don't have enough numbers to be able to do this live in practice randy etzel was saying you know you can't do two days anymore that's no biggie to me i was in the nfl for one year right. with the lions so i know all about not being able to do two days he's of course also in the nfl before he was the head coach here at connecticut with tom coughlin at jacksonville so we'll do it all over again and Swan has trouble handling the low kick. And things do not work out for the Huskies. Or, did the ball come loose? Holy Cross says they have it again. Holy Cross pointing the other way. Nothing from the officials yet. At the Connecticut 20. Another turnover for Randy Edsel's club. Well, they re-kick it. Ball goes off the hands of Jordan Swan. And then let's see contact. Oh, and what a fantastic job by Corey Stefanik of just ripping that football out. Watch 35 come in. Actually, now that I take a look at it, it's uh, 53 Jack McCabe who popped that thing out. It's interesting because Randy Etzel told us this week, quote, I feel really good about our kick returners even though they are young. And that's just a young mistake right there by Jordan Swan. So a huge opportunity for Holy Cross here. 421 left to go in the first half. They've controlled most of the action here in the second quarter to begin with. And they send their veteran quarterback, Peter Puyos, back out there for a first and 10 from the Connecticut 21. Walker in the backfield trips to the left. Pulios wondering why the play clock was running. Delay of game. Offense. Five yard penalty. First down. And it's a delay of game, and Pulios wanted to know why they started the clock so early. Really, no excuse for that. So they lose five yards. And you wonder with a captain on the offensive line and a four-time captain at quarterback yeah. how that happens coming off of basically a, time, a change of possession. And it was a quick change, but they had to unpile everybody, so it wasn't that quick a change. So that moves it back to the 26 and makes it first and 15. Off the play fit. All day for Pouillos, and they could get it back there. No flat. So uh, 
Di Nicola fell to the ground. Bryce McAllister with the coverage, and they say it was incidental contact. And maybe Di Nicola tripped over his own feet. Yeah, I think that ball was a little high the out of the hands of four minutes and Peter Pujols. Seconds. 4 16. Thank you. So there's a look at Dean Nicola coming across. Oh, uh, and that's the left arm around his waist there. There was contact, there's no question, but I don't know about the placement of that football relative to the call. That's a clock issues here in the first half, too. Hey, it's the first week for everybody. Four wide receivers now. Walker in the backfield. Second and 15. Look at Pulios just orchestrate this offense, call the protections, change the play. Now they go to the pistol. Look. Wide receiver screen to Bell. Has it set up nicely. One man to beat on the outside. And he cannot get away from Jamar Summers, but he gets a first down. So a very well-executed play by Puyos, Bell, and the Holy Cross offense setting up first and goal. And it starts with those offensive linemen getting down the line of scrimmage laterally and everybody being on the same page. Watch the linemen, top part of your screen. Watch and they don't go down the field, and then they go hunting for contact. Nice job by 77. Daniel Bernard getting down the field as well. Oof. Tough to defend. First and goal from the seven for Holy Cross. As we approach three and a half minutes left in the half. Walker right up the gut. And he'll go right down Asylum Street for the touchdown. All Holy Cross right now at the rent. Off of the second turnover from the Yukon Huskies, and there is just not enough. I mean, there's your evidence of not having Foley Fotokasi in the middle of that defense right there. Kevin Murphy just getting pushed off the ball too much. You're not getting anywhere near the kind of firmness and stoutness you need along that defensive line. Wells on for another extra point, and it's good. So no Fotokasi, you've turned it over twice, you add it all up, you're trailing at home in Randy Edsel's first game back at Connecticut. And you know, that was only a 46 second drive, but it feels like a lot longer since UConn has had the football. And let's take a look at the fumble on the kick return right here. Jordan Swan puts it on the ground. Great job at the Holy Cross kick, uh, kick coverage team trying to grab at that football against the young man and then the run up the middle for Taekwon Walker and a great job up front getting those big boys a job up front James Murray the left tackle Daniel Bernard the left guard that are Nick Piker kicking over to center Rory Costello on the right side Charles Steele a returning starter at right tackle they have been as much a part of the story of this first half as the UConn mistakes this whole line's played great so Randy Edsel is going to find out a little bit more about his quarterback than maybe he was expecting to in his debut here. Down 20-7. to He's coughed it up once. They've coughed it up in special teams. It's an early gut check for the first-year starter. And remember, the coaches to a T basically told us, we're going to learn a lot about our football team tonight, really from both ends because it is game one. But I think for UConn, a little bit more, as you mentioned there, Eamon, you got young returners, you got a new quarterback, you have a new offense. He's finding out what kind of a group he's got. And they pooch it. And it goes out of bounds. So not well executed there. Now you're going to give Connecticut great field position. And, you know, you want to be cute and keep it away from Swan because he can take it to the house. But that was not what they were looking for. And it wasn't even close. Well, there's the old taking a chance. That ball maybe lands on the ground. It rolls around a little bit. Maybe you get yourself the equivalent of a turnover with a short field the way Holy Cross has in their last two scores. Kick out of bounds. Kicking team. Five-yard penalty from the dead ball spot. First down. Please reset the game clock to three minutes and 35 seconds. Thank you. So now Randy Edsel and his offense. See how they go to work with some good field position. There was ever a time to press on the accelerator to get a quick score because you need some momentum back. This is the drive to do it. We have not seen much out of Arkell Newsom. They give it to him right away, and that's why we haven't seen
seen a whole lot of Arkell Newsom. The running game non-existent. Ahmad Tyler coming up from the safety position to make the hit. Let's look at the movement on the offensive line. You know what I see? A lot of bodies around the line of scrimmage waiting for the group in blue and those big boys paired Rutherford Crozier to get people moving. They move the pocket to the right. That's complete, but a good tackle in the open field, limiting the run after the catch. Keon Dixon with the grab. And Damian Baker with the tackle in the open field, the cornerback. And they get a first down here. Somebody needs to get this offense going. They got no snap right now. On the other side, if they get a stop, Holy Cross might make a take a timeout, but they don't have to. That throw was low and incomplete. So Randy Edsel's going to have to punt it back to Holy Cross with 245. Third three and out for the Huskies. Pressure, no question, but David Pindell, he's got to make this throw, and I think he knows that. Wide receiver was wide open. You can see Rhett Lashley there with a little pat on the bum telling him it's going to be okay, but you got to convert that. Hands weren't up. Got to make that throw. So De Nicola setting up shop around the Holy Cross 20. 2.45 left here. Holy Cross has a timeout to work with if they get the ball back here on the punt. They go after it. Good kick. De Nicola with the early fair catch signal, and he makes the grab at the 15. So now I'm going to make Andy Gresh the head coach of Holy Cross here. 2.37 left to go. You're up 13 on the road. you got a timeout left, but you have the ball inside your own 20. Go. Put press on the accelerator and go. Your offensive lines play great in the first half. you got UConn on roller skates. And more importantly, that guy, number Pujols, Peter Pujols right there, 18 to 29, 193 and a touchdown. That guy has been a maestro on the football field in the first half. Half. I'm going for it. And look, honestly, Eamon, the, the Holy Cross coaches told us we have nothing to lose in this game. So why not try to tack one on here before the end of the half? Julios out of Chicago. Play fake. Here comes pressure over the middle. It's complete. Guess who? Richie Di Nicola. Al Puglios ended up at Holy Cross is an interesting story. Did not start at Loyola Academy until his senior year. So nobody in the country had heard of him. Who recruits a backup? But he went to Holy Cross for a camp and he impressed everybody. And they're like, we got to offer this guy. We got to offer this guy. Coach Gilmore's like, you want me to offer a guy I've never seen play? We have no tape <laughs> on him. But they, luckily, they did offer early enough because as soon as he started to play at Loyola Academy, word was getting out. Oh, they're not ready for that. And Walker has to fall on him. And now Holy Cross might have to take a timeout. Yeah, I'd use the timeout right there. Just stop that clock to give myself a chance. Only one left, so maybe they want to hold on to it. Well, if you ain't going to have the ball, you're only doing it on defense and you got the lead. So Now, now head coach Andy Gresh saying poor on the pedal gets interesting here. Second and 21 on your own 19. You might want to force Connecticut to take some timeouts as we're under two minutes to play. That bad snap exchange might have changed the whole dynamic of this final few minutes for Puyos and Holy Cross. Three on the play clock. As soon as I say that, they're ready to chuck it again. Puyos completes it, so he stays in bounds, so that'll work more clock for Jordan Montgomery, and now there's a timeout. So Connecticut takes a timeout because they want to have some clock left if they can force a punt here on third and a mile. Nowhere for Puyos to go with the football. And then he throws it short. I mean, he <laughs> it's six and one half dozen to the other. You make the completion, they burn the timeout. You don't make the completion, the clock stops. So, you know, either way, if you're if you're only gonna get a couple yard gain, you take it and go. And look, I said burn that timeout there, in part because I thought Holy Cross needed to just slow it down and regroup a little bit to have a chance with Puyos and the way that this guy has been playing out there. He's been fantastic. And again, it's the poise and composure of this quarterback. It is evident. Well, this is when you find out if you're really playing with house money, rolling the dice, whatever your cliche, on third and 17, on your own 23. I would play conservative. I'd run the ball and punt and hope to see if my defense I can keep him out of the end zone. But they're going to throw it. 
And it's incomplete. Good coverage by Trey Bell. So UConn does not have to take a timeout. So that play only took five seconds off the clock. Yeah, bad snap changed everything. And great, I great strategy. You did until you, you know, until, they, until you said it. Right, snap it until until bad snap. So now Swan goes back. Remember he coughed it up when he got stripped, and Holy Cross took advantage. It, interesting that Swan is back there. He's their guy. And they might have gotten a piece of that one. They did. So Connecticut's going to get great field position. Wow, as the worm turned here late in the final minutes of the first half. Holy Cross had it, was rolling. Then they had the bad snap, and now UConn gets a finger on the kick. Number 44 there for Connecticut. Ian Swenson. So Pindell can let it loose here as they take over at the 42 with two timeouts. So the playbook is wide open here for the Huskies to move closer before they go into the locker room. They go out to Beals, short gain, and he stays in bounds. Good tackle there to eliminate any run after the catch. Four true wide receivers on the field for UConn right now. No tight ends, really spreading them out. Quick release. And again, he can't get out of bounds, but he gets the first down, complete to Aaron McLean. Not a whole lot of experience in the kicking game for the Huskies if you're thinking about where they have to get to, but Beals is wide open, and now he'll get out of bounds. They're comfortable with Tarbett, 55 and in, they think. They've seen him make a 58-yarder in practice, but as we all know, practice is a little bit different than under the lights. Yeah, I thought here in warm-ups, 40 is about the limit, I think, for Tarbett. Holy Cross bringing pressure off the edge, and they get to Pindell. Ali Muhammad, scratch that, make that Akeem Walcott. UConn. That makes That's another big time play. Out. Will be a 30 second timeout. And now Connecticut takes a timeout. And that was one of the things the defensive one coordinator one. for Holy Cross, one Mike Kasherba, was worried about was that play right there, except it would be David Pindell getting out of the pocket, stepping through contact or over contact. And a great job right there by Walcott to bring him down, hems him in, and now if you're UConn, you'd love to take a shot deep and try to do something down the field, but they've got to be smart about it as the timeouts are dwindling at 31 seconds to go. They're going to have to work the outsides more than the middle. Hey, Kasherba told us they were going to go after Pindell. They were yeah. going to bring the house. He said, uh, you got to love a guy who's going to quote Patton for you. You know, when that was said, very impressive. Nobody ever defended anything successfully. There's only attack and attack and attack some more. I mean, George C. Scott can't say it any better. That's fantastic. And one of our Canadians on this uh, UConn team, Michael Tarbett, there working the net, getting ready. Husky fans only want to see him for an extra point. Here comes pressure again up the middle, forcing an errant throw and an incompletion. Ryan Brady has been all over the place for Holy Cross this first half. Yep, he's been a winch out there. You see him working between the tackle guard gap. And this is where David Pindell, this is where some of that lack of experience or playing an FBS level game experience kind of hurts him somewhat. He might have been able to sidestep that and run and do something with it. But you got to admire playing the contact. Fourth and seven for Connecticut. 26 seconds left in the half. Steps up in the pocket. He's got room to work with. Great tackle in the open field by Ali Muhammad, and Holy Cross comes up with the stop on fourth down. David Pindell decides to get out of the pocket. Matt Parrott pushed back a little bit. He steps up, and then here he goes. He's on the run. And he's trying to set it up for the wide receiver to come down for what is essentially a crackback block. Problem is, nobody grabbed number 20. 20, Muhammad does a good job of bringing him down by the old uh, shoe tops there. So now it looks like Holy Cross is going to be content to take a knee and go into the locker room with a 20 to 7 lead. So Connecticut had the ball four times in the second quarter. All possessions lasted less than a minute. Not what Randy Edsel and Rhett Lashley were looking for in the season opener. But Pouillos 
Making all the right decisions in that first half. And the Crusaders on the road against Connecticut. First meeting between these two schools since 1985. Go to the locker room with a two-touchdown lead. Sloppy. At the end of two the turnovers, half. pretty much the difference, because Holy Cross took advantage. One in the kicking game and one the quarterback coughed up. The Huskies will have to regroup and make some adjustments. Too many mistakes for UConn in that first half. And the thing I didn't see, I didn't see any fire out of the offense. When they needed to find a way to start the light diffuse and get this team going, no one could do it. Let's check in with Taylor down on the field. Coach, how would you evaluate David Pendell's performance in the first half? I think it, uh, he's done some good things, and there were some things that he could do better. And how big was the loss of Foley early? How did that impact the defense? Well, again, we just got to get off the field on third down. I mean, between third and fourth down, we're not getting the stops to get off the field. And some penalties getting your team. What's going to be the message to them in the locker room? Well, we just got to play every play, one play at a time. You know, now we got to we put ourselves in a little situation here. Now we got to fight back. Thanks, Coach. Right. Back to you. That was his message at his very first meeting. Play every play like it's your last. Holy Cross has a 20 to 7 lead. Now we send you back to our New York studio as we rejoin Larry Ridley and Sean Mulcahy for the Connecticut football halftime show. Holy Cross on the road leads UConn 20 to 7. Now it's time to go to our studio. Larry Ridley and Sean Mulcahy. Out there from the wrench, Sean Mulcahy here, the former UConn captain. And you look at this first half, we talked to the Holy Cross uh, coaches, the assistant coaches, the D.C. and the offensive coordinator as well during the week. And they said, look, Larry, we're going to be aggressive. We're going to go after these guys. No holds barred. They're not holding anything back. Crusaders look pretty good. What does UConn need to do in the second half? Well, they need to pick it up. And uh, they need some leadership on the team as well. You know, coming from the head coach all the way down to the seniors, to the uh, senior advisory board. You know, they don't have captains anymore, so they're bringing all these guys together. And they need to step it up. You know, it's, it's game time. Any t time you play a team on the field, it doesn't matter what division they are. They're looking to win. Everyone's looking to win. So you can't slight anybody. And it looks like that's what they've done in the first First half. Holy Cross from the FCS level, uh, as we used to call it, the 1AA level. Yeah. So we'll come back with more. Sean Mulcahy, Mulcahy here uh, with Larry Ridley. We'll come back with more of the halftime show. UConn trailing 20 to 7 to Holy Cross out in East Hartford. We'll come back with more after the break. Hi. Welcome to the UConn Football Halftime Show. I'm Larry Ridley alongside former UConn Captain Sean Mulcahy. All right, and you look at that. Ooh, first half. Uh, not very good for UConn as we'll take a look at the highlights here. Opening night, UConn hosting a Holy Cross, marking the return of one Randy Etzel to the Husky sideline back for the first time since early 2011. But early first quarter, our defense takes a hit. Foley Fadukasi well, hits the Knights QB. Crusaders QB Peter Pujols in the head and Afutakasi called for the targeting. He was ejected, disqualified. He's gone later on the drive. Holy Cross going for it on fourth and eight. Pujols to Pujols to Jordan Montgomery. That's a 15-yard gain. Then the Knights or the Crusaders get in the red zone. Pujols over the middle, knocked down by Tyler Cole. Knights Crusaders would settle for a field goal. Then Juco transfer, David Pendale, the QB starting for UConn on second and 10, finds Herky Mayala, who avoids the tackle, a gain of 18 on the play. And then later on the drop, Pendale off the play action, finds an open Alec Bloom, the tight end, tackled at the six-yard line. It's an 18-yard gain, UConn moving. Then Nate Hawkins takes the handoff on the outside, and he's got nothing but green spaces into the painted end zone. 11-yard touchdown, his first career touch. UConn up 7-3, looking pretty good, second quarter. Here's the Juco. Quarterback Pendell on the keeper and he coughs it up, gains 11, fumbles the football. Nick McBeth recovers. Holy Cross gets the ball and ensuing drive. Pujols play action finds Blake's Bell for a touchdown. UConn down now 10 7. On the kickoff after Holy Cross added a field goal, Jordan Swan gets the ball, picks it up, and, and then proceeds to, to lay it back down on the ground, fumbles the football. Crusaders get the ball at the UConn 21 after another turnover hits the Huskies. 
And then on the ensuing drive, Daquan Walker takes the handoff right off the gut. Six-yard touchdown. Holy Cross up 20-7 to as we take a look at your first half score presented by UConn Health. And there you can see UConn down 20-7. to And there is the quarterback, the fifth-year quarterback, a four-year starter. You look at Holy Cross, they have four fifth-year starters uh, coming back for them on the offensive side of the ball. Puyos. 20 of 32, 211 yards. You can see David Pendale uh, started off 9 of 10, now 14 of 19, 110 yards. And there's the story. Arkeel Newsom, six carries, negative seven yards rushing. He does have 10 yards receiving out of the backfield. All right, Sean, you're the former UConn captain. You look at this first half, and it was all about turnovers. Two turnovers, one by Pendale, one on the kickoff, and then didn't convert on fourth down, so that was almost pretty much a turnover there. What did you see there in the first half? You know, sloppy play. It almost looked as though UConn was kind of out, out of shape, but I think that was just an illusion because, you know, the Crusaders are throwing the ball everywhere. They're spreading it out. They're keeping it very inconsistent on what plays they're choosing, but the turnovers are really hurting UConn not only with giving up a drive, but field position. They're giving the Crusaders great field position to make, you know, a chance to score at least three points. But, you know, right here, he, he's a true freshman swing. So, you know, there was questions when we were on the conference call earlier this week. We said, hey, you're going to put a true freshman back there returning kicks? And he said, yeah, I believe in him. And I said, okay, well, now you got a turnover there. That's what's going to happen. So in order for UConn to really come back here in the second half, they need to settle down. I'm sure there's going to be a lot of hooting and hollering in the locker room. I wouldn't like to see that transcript. But, uh, you know, eliminate the turnovers and it'll be all right. Coach Brian Rock, when I talked to him, he's the offensive coordinator for the Crusaders at Holy Cross. He, look, he's been an offensive coach at Purdue. So he's been on this side of the FCS versus FBS matchup. He said, Larry, we're going to be aggressive. Yeah. We are going to come after them. We are going to throw the ball to win. That's how we have to win. So they're doing a good job there. Also, UConn, the running game. Mm. Newsom, uh, coming back, supposed to have a great year this year. Nowhere to run. Where do you find blame here? Is it him not finding the holes or is it the offensive line getting too much pushback with those white jerseys? Offensive line's not doing a good enough job. You know, you got to work as a cohesive unit, all five guys, and that's difficult. That's the most players that have to work together in terms of a unit. You know, quarterback's one guy, O-line's five guys. What do you have to do with UConn on offense to try to get back into this game? Because it's going to take probably 27, 30 points away. Yeah, you're going to want to score quickly. You know, you can't be running the ball trying to establish the run game. So what you got to do is hold on to your blocks, limit the penalties. You can have no more turnovers here in the second half and get some points on the board. If you start off with three points, it's better than nothing. All right, we'll come back with more of the pregame show. UConn, not the only team in the American kicking off their season tonight. We'll check in on the other games in the American when we return. Stick with us here on the UConn Halftime Show. UConn Halftime Show, Florida International down in Orlando tackling UCF. UCF's opening drive, Mackenzie Milton completes it to Jordan Aikens. He's a former quarterback from the 22-yard touchdown. UCF up 8-0 after the two-point conversion later. Ball at midfield, Milton throws it deep, and he's going up top to Triquan Smith for the 50-yard touch. UCF up 14-7 after missing the extra point. That's why they go for two. Second quarter, you... Knights up four, first and go. Milton finds Gabriel Davis in the end zone for a touchdown. UCF 21-10. They would lead 40-10 at halftime right now. Wow. 61-17 down in O-Town. Tulsa opening up on the road against the Cowboys, Oklahoma State, early first quarter. Third and four, Cowboys. Mason Rudolph heaves it down the far side and connects with Tyron Johnson. That's a 44-yard touchdown. Cowboys up seven. Middle first. Oklahoma State driving again, and Rudolph fires down the middle of the field and hits James Washington on the 40-yard touchdown. Cowboys up 28-14. It is 38-17 at the half in Stillwater. Here are some other games going on in the AAC tonight, presented by Town Fair Tires. You can see there Cincinnati with a 13-point lead over the Governors. Austin P. from Clark's. Miss uh, Tennessee there in Memphis and Louisiana Monroe just on the way they kicked off at nine o'clock at the Liberty Bowl so still more to do on our halftime coverage we take a look at what UConn needs to adjust to in the second half when we return here on the UConn pregame show UConn down 20 to 7 UConn down 20 to 7 at the halftime show here in East Hartford To the UConn Halftime Show, and here are the stats at halftime presented by People's United Bank. And you can see their first downs in favor of Holy Cross. Most of the numbers there in favor of Holy Cross. Peter Puyols, the uh, fifth-year senior for Holy Cross, having a pretty good first half there. The turnovers for UConn at two, and also that fourth down conversion that they filled on. Uh, a sticky situation there for 
of the Huskies out there at the rent. All right, Sean, going back out into the second half here for UConn, you're down 13. Offensively, do you put it on Pendell's shoulder and you just throw it all over the lot? How do they get back into this? You want to keep some balance together, so you're going to keep the running game, you know, a little bit assimilated in the in the first part of the third quarter. Then you kind of see how the game wears out. If, if the defense is getting some stops, then you can run a little bit more. But as you're getting closer to the fourth quarter, you want to start airing out either to tie the game or to take advantage of a lead that you would have. But the defense really needs to step up. They need to get off the field on the third down, and they need to make turnovers, and, and UConn needs to hold on to the ball. Yeah, you could hear Randy Etzel out there in uh, East Hartford right now. He's probably screaming through the doors. Also, take care of the ball. So that will do it for a halftime. For Sean Mulcahy, I'm Larry Ridley. We'll see you after the game. But for now, enjoy the second half of Holy Cross and UConn following a break. UConn down 20-7 to here on the UConn Halftime Show. what the Husky faithful was expecting or hoping in Randy Edsel's return after 30 minutes of football. UConn trails Holy Cross 20 to 7. Eamon McEnany along with Andy Gresh. Taylor looks down on the field and uh, all the mojo, all the juice right now, Andy, is with the visitors wearing white and purple. No question and turnovers have been the key problem for UConn to this point. Look, Peter Pouliot is playing great, but when you're turning over the football and you see Danny Pindell, the quarterback, first real run from the quarterback spot, he puts the pill on the ground. UConn had two turnovers, leads to the touchdown pass. Peter Pouliot has played absolutely outstanding to this point. And then Jordan Swan, there's the turnover on the kick return. That leads to more points. They got to figure this out now. So Andy's angle obviously stopped the turnovers, but how do you eliminate Pouliot now, now that he's in a rhythm? Well, you got to try to hit him and you got to crank up the pressure and I think be physical on his receivers on the outside. And Puyos and the Crusaders will go to work first here in the third quarter as they will receive the kickoff. Turnovers leading to points for Coach Gilmore's club, and he is looking to pull off the upset. Off a four and seven season a year ago, but he has his star quarterback back, and we saw the difference Puyos can make in that first half. Here's Muhammad bringing it out one yard into the end zone. It's hit at the 21 by a trio of Huskies, so that's where Puglios and the Crusaders will go to work to start the second half. Take a look at Puglios' numbers. Very efficient first half. Amazing. 20 of 32, 211 and one touchdown. You know, and the buzz of the media area up here during halftime is how Peter Puglios is a guy who looks like a seasoned veteran out there. He's run the offense efficiently. I don't think Holy Cross has been in one bad play tonight, and that's because of the headiness of that quarterback. Now, last year, UConn trailed against Maine 21-14 in the opener. They came back to win it 24-21. Now, Puglios rolls out right, flag on the play. And he got popped by Carrizola after the throw. Flag became or came before the throw it looked like. Holding. Defense. Ten yard penalty. Automatic first half. Boy, mistakes and turnovers. Just killing UConn right now. Carazola. That's a hold. I mean, pretty easy call right there. And a really good acting job as well by number 88, Jake Simshauser. That's twice you've called the Crusaders out for acting. You're gonna, you're no, it's a, teacher part, up there? it's a part of the game. Are you kidding me? Everybody thinks it's just quarterbacks. It should be everybody on the field. Julios throwing on the run, has a man open. This is Bell. And he gets ushered out of bounds by Watkins, close to the first down. They give him the first down. You see 33, Chris Britton on the backside, crash down hard. If he comes in with his hands up, Puyos can't make that throw. But he didn't, overcommitted, easy lane for the quarterback to deliver the football. Trips to the right. Taking his time. Montgomery to the short side. Top of your screen. And he's gonna take too much time. Did they get the timeout? Coach Gilmore wanted a timeout. And they get it. 
time out, Holy Cross. First charge, time out. Of the now again, half. they had a delay game after a turnover, out. and after a first down, you don't expect correction for time out. A veteran quarterback to have to burn a timeout on the opening drive in the third quarter. You wouldn't, however, just to kind of take people at home inside what it's like. You know, you're getting the play call from the sidelines. If you're getting a play, what they call a check with me, it's a two-way go. They call two plays in the huddle. You're trying to get everyone set. You know, for a guy like Puyols, it could be as simple as sliding a protection. Then, ooh, I saw a ghost. Let me slide it back. So there's a lot that he is digesting and communicating at the line of scrimmage. And if the play doesn't come in right and guys don't get set, any little thing can kind of throw that timing off. And look, if I'm Tom Gilmore, with the way Peter Puyos has played tonight, I'm not happy about using the second half timeout, but I'll I'll deal with it. Puyos spent some time this summer as a counselor at the Manning Passy Camp down in Louisiana, where he has some family. So he certainly learned some things from Peyton, Eli, and Archie. Second year he's done that. Safety creeping up caused him to go back to the line of scrimmage and change of protection. Now Joseph, the linebacker, changing some things for the Huskies. Rolls back out to the right after the fake. And that's complete. Nice grab by Dean Nicola. Saw the strong hands as he hung on with that one as he went out of bounds. This Pugliels to Dean Nicola combination. Look at Pugliels just slinging it. I mean, that, that's Brett Favre looking right there. Ball in his right hand. Boom, it's out. It's on time. It's on target. But the pre-snap read and recognition of the quarterback is elite tonight. Dean Nicola with eight grabs for 70 yards. It's been thrown to 13 times. And they run it on the ground, and they break attack. This is Kozier in the open field inside the 30. So a nice run by the sophomore out of Milford, Massachusetts, Dominic Kozier. Great job of stepping through the tackle right there by Kozier. And he waits for his lineman, Joe Mattingly, to get downfield to help him out as well. Very tough and savvy running on the same play for Dominic Kozier. So Kozier stays out there in the backfield, trips to the left. Montgomery to the short side on first and 10 from the UConn 27. Kozier didn't know he was throwing it to him. So the sophomore must have heard the wrong check with me in that huddle because he yeah. was not on the same page as the quarterback. That, that's going to happen. Kozier, though, really nice run earlier. And uh, how about Holy Cross picking up right where they left off? Back at the line of scrimmage, no huddle here for second and ten. Kozier now lines up as a wide receiver, empty backfield here. Trips to the left, twins to the short side. Dean Nicole is in the slot to the right, along with Montgomery. Seven on the play clock. On the slant, they go to Montgomery for a short game. Jamar Summers with the coverage. So that'll bring up third. Call it six. And if I'm Billy Crocker, UConn defensive coordinator, I got to get guys up on the line of scrimmage to deal with these receivers and try to throw off the timing. If you really think about it, Poyos has not really pressed the ball down the field very much. It's been a lot of inner short to intermediate stuff. Twins to both sides. They roll the pocket to the right. Is he inbounds? They say yes, but it's short. Dean Nicola gets to the 20, so it'll be fourth and three. And they're going to go for three. Be about a 38 yarder. So I'm a little surprised by this call, but you get the three points, you make it a three possession game. There you go. And I think now with the lead. As much as Tom Gilmore would love to be aggressive, you've got the lead, you're on the road, you're playing an FBS opponent, you gotta be smart. He's already made two. A.J. Wells. No good here. So the D comes up with a stop on the opening possession of the second half. First miss of the night for the Holy Cross kicker. Power start.
The UConn Football on SNY is brought to you by Connecticut Lighting Centers and Restoration Lighting Gallery. So much more than just a lighting store. By Subaru of New England. Discover more and find a list of Subaru retailers at SubaruofNewEngland.com. And by Connecticut Lottery. You can't win if you don't play. CTLottery.org. So off the missed field goal, Connecticut offense on the field for the first time in the second half. Ran just 33 plays to Holy Cross's 52 in the first half. And Pindell on the rollout. Pressure coming, and he just gets rid of it. And that was Zobrist, Phil Zobrist. Again with penetration. I mean, great job of playing not only the tight end on the leak out, but also making sure that he can get up field and get to David Pindell. And you look at these Holy Cross defenders, at every level they are running with UConn offensive players. So he checks it down to Hopkins, threw it behind him, but Hopkins makes a nice slide and grab for a short game. So UConn staring another three and out in the face here on third and long, so looking to come up with eight yards. Well, and herein lies the rub. You're down 20 to seven. You love to run the football because it opened up the passing game, but you're down, and if you skunk yourself, you're three and out. So what do you do? You've got to try to huck it. So Thompson in the backfield. No Arkell Newsom here on the opening drive on the slant. Big hit, short. Guess who? Ryan Brady. So they make the completion, but it's short of the first down. But playing with the grab, but no running after that catch. Right, David Pindell's looking at the sideline going, come on, let's go for it. And they're like, no, no, no. Meet you... Randy Edsel. Yeah. I mean, no coach obviously is going no. for it, but Randy Edsel certainly... Not with the way their offense is played tonight. I mean, to be able to call it and say we want to go for it on fourth and two, you got to earn it. They haven't earned it. UConn just one of seven on third down here in the opener. So another punt coming up for Brett Graham. And the punter falls down, but no flag. And now there's a very late flag. Wow. An extremely late flag thrown by Tracy Jones. And Andy Gresh is going to have to tell me if this was acting job or not. Running into the kicker. A Defense huge break for Connecticut. Five yard penalty. That's Results a first, first down. down. Well, you get five in the first down there, and let's see. Oh, oh my. Oh, boy. Come on. That's that a veteran is... referee fall for that one. I'm sorry. Ladies and gentlemen, the Academy Award goes to. I mean, that's just a. And, and you know what? If I'm Tom Kilmore, I'd, I'd pull a nutty too. I'd be really upset. And I know he's giving it to somebody on the sidelines, but he should be giving it to the officials. That's yeah, a very I mean, questionable He's probably call. giving it his player for getting anywhere close to him because clearly there was no punt on. I mean, I'm just... No, but it's right. like that Tyler Davis call earlier where there was a little bit of a nudge there. But, I mean, you know, you, you got to have some discretion when you're officiating. So UConn gets another chance on this drive. Looking deep. And no flag. Mayala, Mayala being covered by Muhammad. So good coverage by Ali Muhammad. No flag, but nowhere to throw the football. Right. I mean, look at that coverage there by Ali Muhammad. That is great stuff down the field on Herji Mayala. Oh, as Mike Kasherba told us, Salim will not be out of his league on Thursday night. No, and he has proven that. Take it to Beals on the end around. Here comes pressure. Hit as he throws. And it's complete. They go right back to Mayala. A huge game. Down to the Holy Cross 38. Boy, how many things go right here? Pindell with a player bearing down on him. And then the safety, Ahmad Tyler, number 12. Watch him fall. Otherwise, he contends that pass. 28 yards. They go right back to Mayala. And there might be a late hit there on Capsis. No call. So Connecticut looking to take advantage of the running into the punter call. They pick up 28 yards on the pass play to Mayala. Go right back to him. Now they run it. Hopkins gets away from the first man, gets the first down and more. Inside the 15, pushed out of bounds by Ahmad Tyler. And you're noticing some of the Crusaders up front gassed on this drive great call because there were a couple of them who tapped out in the last two plays and this is really around the edge a great job by mark abo he's right there he can't make the tackle and then hopkins does the rest 
Right back to Hopkins, and this time he cannot get away. Tyler coming up from the secondary. And Ebo ready this time to bring him down. Ebo's done a nice job tonight along with Teddy Capsis. Those guys have played well at that right defensive end spot. And a couple of things have gone right for UConn here to make some plays happen. Who cares how they got there? They're on the 15. They need to get in the end zone. So now we see Newsom in the backfield. They line him up as a wide receiver, setting up a screen. And they get it to Mayall, and he cannot get away. So he makes the grab, but Macbeth with another tackle. So it'll be third down here for the Huskies. Tenth play of the drive that, remember, was kept alive by that running into the punter call. And third down has not been the Huskies' friend here in the opener. And Pindell's been getting hit on almost every play on this drive. Well, Newsom moves over to the left. Picks up the blitzer. Pindell looking to run for it. Gets away from the first man. Gets drilled out of bounds. A big hit by Chris Riley. And now Randy Edsel's going to go for it on fourth down, it looks like. Chris Riley bringing it. Fourth and two. Huge play in this ball game. After the Huskies got a call on running into the punter. Looking to cash in. Under eight to play in the third. Hopkins in the backfield. They give it to him, lowers the shoulder, and he is driven back. With a little bit of momentum offensively, but on fourth and two, they try the inside handoff against this Holy Cross Crusaders defense, and they are all over it. 20 to 7, Holy Cross. Any stadium, Holy Cross with a 27 to lead on UConn. Fourth and two, look at the Huskies. Left side, they've got the numbers on the matchup. Not a great double team at the point of attack in the offensive line on the left side. And these Crusaders. Not only have they been swarming to the football, there's a little bit of me that thinks they kind of know what's coming. I mean, that reaction told me they knew that was going to be some sort of inside dive. And right now, that's a very concerning look on the face of quarterback David Pendell. Somebody has to find a way to light a fire under this offense. Right now, they're just moping around. Well, Ryan Brady on the other side out of LaSalle College High in Philadelphia is having a whale of an opener for the Holy Cross defense. Play fake over the middle, complete. First down. That's number 82, Derek Mountain. They're going deep into their tight end depth chart. They get out of the shadows of the goalpost for a first down. Out to the Holy Cross 22. Trips to the left now on first and 10. They run it up the middle. Maybe out to the 25. They'll mark it at the 26. You know, the UConn coaches, Eamon, talked to us during the week about building confidence on both sides of the ball. And right now it just feels like they picked up where they left off last year in terms of confidence. There's no, you see Foldacasi kind of dancing on the sidelines. It'd be nice if he were in the game to be able to help them out. If you're just joining us, Foley Foldacasi, their veteran defensive lineman up front, ejected early for a targeting call, opening drive of the game. Attack the middle again. Now, take a look at this aim in from behind. It's Kevin Murphy, number 94, that's in for Foley Fotokasi. Look at the center of the screen. Watch the center. Blocking the guy on the ground. Can't make a play if you're on the ground. So we talk about the middle of this UConn defense. Holy Cross has been able to time to run between the tackles. Let's see if they try to do it here on third and three, or if they trust Pouliot to throw it. Don't say trust, but just put it in the passing game. And they will. Here comes pressure off the edge from Carazola, and he will go down. Carazola got there first. Ormsby brought him down. So exactly what the defense was looking for there on that drive. Second sack of the night for the Huskies, and they should get decent field position. Working on the sophomore there, Joe Mattingly in the game for Charles Steele, and a great job by the senior, Luke Carazola, 
the most dangerous thing for an offensive lineman is to deal with a good pass rusher in those third and eight situations because you know they're bringing the heat. Swan back to receive. And it's a low line drive kick that sails over his head. So another mistake by Swan. Can the Crusaders get there? Yes, they will. Things started out okay for Swan in the kickoff return, but he has had a rough introduction to college football since. This ball goes over his head, and it is downed at the one. Back to UConn after this. UConn offense down by 13, backed up against it inside their one, and they've had their hands full with this Holy Cross defense. Yeah, and it really is those linebackers. There's Nick McBeth getting the quarterback, David Pindell, who's been taking shots all day long. Here comes Ryan Brady, who's been very active, 44 up the middle. And then you get a look of a great job by Phil Zobris, who bangs down on the tight end and then presses up to make sure Pindell can't get rid of the football. And for David Pindell, the completion percentage isn't bad. It's the fumble, the turnover, and then Peter Poyos. Good grief. I mean, what a night. Well, Pindell started off with a hot hand, eight of his first nine. Now out of the gun in his end zone. They run it up the middle to Hopkins. It's out across the five, so a good positive play to start the drive to get some breathing room. You know, sometimes you need to light the wick for your offense. Being backed up on your one-yard line might be the thing that might draw a little aggression out of this UConn offensive line because there has not been a lot of it tonight. Certainly, if you're going to run it up the gut, you're going to do it with Hopkins at 6'1", 212, as opposed to Arkel Newsom at 5'7", 190. Second and five. Right back to Hopkins. Nice move there. Gets the first down and then some. Out across the 20, across the 30. Huge play there by Nate Hopkins to spark some people here at the rent in this offense. Boy, they need that. Big time run there by Nate Hopkins. Taking advantage of playing time. Give him a seam over the left side between Matt Parrott and Trey Rutherford. He did the rest. 37 yards, and they go right back to him, and Crusaders ready for him this time. And I like that, though. You ran it twice. You got big kicking. Develop that confidence in that offensive line. It's the only way you're ever going to be able to do it. And here comes Arkel Newsom back into the game now. So the rotation between Newsom and Hopkins continues, but great job there on those couple plays by Nate Hopkins. Holy Cross bringing pressure, picked up. Throw to the outside, incomplete. UConn fans looking for a flag. Thought Damian Baker got there early. Great job by Baker. Hands on him, no question. But a good job of getting that left hand up to deflect the football. And now UConn with some personnel substitutions. And, you know, this is the hard part, I think, for a play caller, for Rhett Lashley, when you're into these third and eights, trying to figure out the right group to get on the field all the time. And he brings Newsom out, sends out Jason Thompson, Richard Jr. out of Shelton, Connecticut, in the backfield. Pendell with time. Throwing it deep into double coverage, and it's knocked away. Damian Baker, that ball hung up there. He's lucky that they have a chance to punt. Connecticut now one of nine on third down. I don't know what more to add. You're throwing it down the field, one-on-one -on -one coverage where the guy is clearly covered, and you got a safety playing over the top. It's third and eight. I don't know why you press the ball down the field there. So another punt for Connecticut. Graham gets off a good one. And Dean Nicola. Short return. So again, we came in talking about Peter Pouliot, and right now he still remains the story for this Holy Cross offense in the short passing game. And he is distributing the football to everybody, and I mean everybody. There's Richie Di Nicola. There he is on the end around where they flip it to Di Nicola to be able to get a little bit of a run. And then they go with the old double slant routes. It's Di Nicola once again. Pouliot out of his own end zone, doing a good job of throwing to the return route. Blaze Bell has had himself a heck of a night. That one on the little out route. There's your play action post route for the touchdown. And that guy, number six, Peter Bullios, has looked like a pro tonight, quite honestly. As the offensive coordinator, Brian Rock, told us we're going to have to throw it 
to win it. And right now they are leading 20 to 7. And run it up the middle there, Carrizola with the tackle on Guild. They have benefited from two turnovers, but the passing game has been efficient for Pulios and the Crusaders, and that's been his main target, Di Nicola. Great numbers there for both starting wide receivers for Holy Cross. Big time stuff out of those two players, Di Nicola and Bell. away at the last second. McAllister got his finger on it. Let's check in with Taylor Rooks. Hey, man, right now, this is just a very deflated football team, especially the offense. Their heads are down. They're moving slow. Lashy has even told them to hustle off the field because they were barely moving. Lashy has come over multiple times, gotten eye-to-eye -eye with David Pendell, just trying to give him encouragement and give him some of that confidence that he's been talking about, guys. Well, confidence was the key word from Randy Edsel. You ask him, what's the key to get Connecticut back to where you had it when you left? And he said, look, it starts with confidence, and then you need to win. Well, what comes first, the chicken or the egg? It's very tough to be confident when you're coming off a 3-9 and nine season and Holy Cross is leading you by two touchdowns. They go to Bell on the wide receiver screen. And he, late flag. It was a first down. And it looks like it's going to be holding on Holy Cross. Offense, number 67. 10-yard penalty, third down. Take a look at this and see that there's a, ooh, a big face mask right there. But that's from Junior Joseph. It looked like that was the arm of Junior Joseph, and I do believe he is the player that is down on the field for UConn. This would be a devastating loss for this defense considering they're already down. EJ Levenberry and Vontae Diggs. And up front for this game, Foley Fodakasi and Joe Joseph. 50 year senior out of Sinking Springs, Pennsylvania. This is his 30th career start. So to your point, that's certainly some of that veteran experience that they've been relying on. I want to go back to Taylor's sideline report and what you said, Eamon, in terms of just the life around this football team. You know, you have Fotokasi who gets thrown out of the game for targeting. You now have Joseph that's down. You have Vontae Diggs who's down, EJ Levenberry. These are guys that are uh, their hands are stamped. They can lead on this football team. And right now, here's the thing, chicken or the egg, you're right. But there's no life on that sideline whatsoever. When it's a defensive third down, there's like one guy dancing around. They're not rallying around each other at this point on either side of the ball. So as you mentioned, it looked like it was that arm that might have grabbed the face mask of the receiver that's being attended to. So certainly we'll get an update on Junior Joseph, but that does not look good with 2.43 left to play in the third. Well, now what do you do if you're Billy Crocker, the defensive coordinator? You know, you run a 3-3-5, and your linebacker depth has been tremendously cut into. So now do you start to play a little more dime and put an extra defensive back on the field? That's what it looks like they're doing. Marche Terry in there at safety. He's in that hybrid role, it looks like. Now remember, the Holy Cross first down was wiped out by a holding call, so it's third and 11. Here comes pressure. Julio steps up. Pressure coming from behind. He's going to have to run it. Gets near the first down, but he's short. So Gil Coach Gilmore sends out the punting team. But that run showed you a little something right there. He could feel that pressure coming from behind. You mentioned how the NFL scouts have been visiting the campus up in Worcester to take a look at number six. They're going to look at that play and say, that's good instincts and good feel of knowing when to run away from the defender. So McGrail out of Hohokus, New Jersey, on to punt. Swan, who's had a rough night, back to receive another punt. Comes up, makes the grab at the 30. Across the 40, a full speed ahead and hit hard, but an impressive return as he got from 0 to 60 very quickly. 
So good field position for Connecticut. Let's check in with Taylor. All right, guys, right now Joseph is walking off of the field. He's very visibly in pain. The staff wouldn't tell me exactly what is going on, but he's letting out some yells when they touch what it looks to be the left side of his body. But right now he is leaving the field. Yeah, my first thought was he popped his shoulder out, given the way he was twisted on the ground and reaching up to try to take down the ball carrier. So very interesting development here. Grandy Edsel's going to a new quarterback. It's Bryant Sheriffs, who made 20 starts in the, under Bob Diaco. And they run the jet sweep to Keon Dixon. And this is certainly something no one expected no. here. With the way they gave the job to Pindell so early in camp, no way did anyone expect Randy Edsel to go to the bullpen in the opener. And when you think of Brian Sheriffs, if you're a UConn fan from last year, you think of a lot of quarterback draws and a lot of incompletions. They go right back to Dixon. Makes the first man miss and gets the first down. And gets hit out of bounds by Ahmad Tyler. Well, he talked a lot about it. And again, I know I've been harping on Spark. Let's light a fire. There you go. Let's change the quarterback. Let's get the veteran in there. Get a little bit of success and see if we can get the ball rolling. With time, and that's complete. That's to Mayala. Right back at the line of scrimmage. Second and three. Hopkins bounces to the outside, gets the corner, gets a first down, gets away from Macbeth inside the five. The Sheriffs wants to go quickly. And look at him running around trying to get that team up on the line of scrimmage. It's the first signs of life out of this offense. Respecting Brian Sheriff's ability to run the football on the backside, but Hopkins gets it done front. Right back to Hopkins, and he's in. So the move to Sheriffs pays immediate dividends as they march right down the field and score. And I'm going to guess that drive was about 35 seconds long. That thing moved down the field. That's exactly what the Huskies needed. How about Nate Hopkins? 109 yards, two scores. That's a good night. Take that. So Tarbit on for the extra point. And it's good. So it's a six-point ball game all of a sudden at Pratt and Whitney Stadium. And give Randy Edsel credit. He made a bold decision, and then Sheriffs and the offense did the rest. Yep, the offensive line picked it up. Look at that right there. Great block by the left guard, 77, Trey Rutherford. Look at that, just washing him down inside. Matt Parrott keeps his feet. And look at Brian Sheriffs. Look at him turn around and get everybody involved. And say, That's the way we got to play some offense there. 118, a little longer than I thought. But it didn't feel 118, did it? No, uh, they moved quickly. And, you know, they got rid of the ball quickly. The Keon ball. Dixon was a major factor early. I was just going to say, ball came out on time. They worked the outside. Then they hit the big run. He got them up to the line of scrimmage, and they came right back to it. You know, it <laughs> Shows you the importance of field position, too. Great point, Eamon. You're exactly right. Field position and getting positive yards on first down not being in second and ten or second and eight which it feels like they have been a lot with david pindell in a quarterback that's the first time we've really felt the rhett lashley offense here tonight even on that earlier touchdown drive there were elements of it but that was the first time where it looked like it was supposed to look it in the end zone so we saw pulios warming up there now a little more pressure on the holy cross offense to move the ball as we approach the fourth quarter. Here's Muhammad. He's going to take a knee. So now a UConn defense without Foley Fatukasi, without Vontae Diggs, and now without Junior Joseph takes the field. Looking to stop a veteran quarterback and get the ball back to now their starting quarterback, Brian Sheriffs. And missed field goal earlier in this quarter for Holy Cross is looming large now. 
You like that call. I did. I I did not mind that call. Again, you have the lead. You're on the road. You can I mean, what we just saw in the last minute 18 was really among the first signs of life we've seen in this whole football game from the UConn Huskies. So that one didn't bother me. Two backs now on first and 10 from the 25. They run it to Walker to the left, trying to get away from Carazola, and maybe a yard. Kevin Murphy giving chase as well, and now you hear some of that energy that you heard Taylor talk about down on the sidelines that they were looking for. And from the Holy Cross standpoint, the best thing that happens to them is... End of the third quarter. Here we are, end of the third quarter, momentum has stopped. Look at Carazola sprint down to the other end. That's a Husky defender who wants to go to work. Can UConn pull off the comeback? Julios and the Crusaders 15 minutes away from the upset, but right now it's the home team with some momentum. Hopkins in the offense pulling them within six. The defense looking for a stop when we return after this. Welcome to Toyota's. This pretty. It took a while, but there's some energy in the rent right now as Connecticut has pulled within six. They're hoping the defense can come up with another stop and get the ball back to the offense as we start the fourth quarter and the offense came to life as Randy Edsel made the switch to Bryant Sheriffs at quarterback. Now Peter Puyos and the Holy Cross offense facing a second and nine from their own 26. Junior Joseph and Foley Fadakasi out of the game for the Connecticut defense. Bobbled. Now he's got a scramble. Ormsby giving chase. Carazola giving chase. And he gets out of bounds. Watkins pops him. Got to be careful when you hit those quarterbacks on the sidelines, but clearly he was still in bounds and a good hit. Peter Pugliol's composure. The game clock. Close on the uh, sideline hit, seconds. but it's was not late. Single. But number That's six didn't panic back there. Hey, to those rushing yards that we saw here at the beginning of the fourth quarter, Holy Cross would love to try to run the football. Four for 14 on third down compared to UConn's one for nine. If Holy Cross can find a way to get a running game the way UConn did in the third quarter, it's going to go a long way to them maybe coming out of here with the upset win. They're not going to find it here with an empty backfield facing a third and eight. Husky fans making some noise, trying to make life rough on the veteran quarterback for Holy Cross. Here comes pressure. Hit as he throws. Incomplete. Santana Sterling right up the middle. Hit Puyos. One of the biggest hits Peter Puyos has taken all night long. And you mentioned Santana Sterling unblocked the left tackle. James Murray can't get over and redirect. And if you're Holy Cross, you've been winning those one-on-one -on -one battles all night. So it's not an issue with turning the quarterback loose and letting him run. You take that one-on-one. -on -one. So it's been of an adventure for Jordan Swan. His last return to help set up a touchdown. This is short and away from him. And it hits a Holy Cross player, Muhammad. So again, good field position for Sheriffs and the Huskies. Down by six. Brian Sheriffs ready to go once again for this Connecticut offense when we return. Don't forget, coming up after the game, get all of your post-game reactions and highlights, plus an in-depth game breakdown on the UConn football post-game show presented by People's United Bank tonight, immediately after the game, only on SNY. Larry Ridley and Sean Mulcahy holding down the fort. And we noticed Peter Pugliels was hit hard on that last play. And certainly if you're a Holy Cross fan, not sure if that's Puglios. I didn't, don't remember him wearing gloves, but I don't have committed to memory. No, I see him from our uh, broadcast location. He is on the sidelines with his helmet on, waiting to go back in. So now, Brian Sheriff, second drive of the game. With time, throwing deep, low, and short. Looking for Mayala. That's the issue with Bryant Sheriffs in terms of throwing the football down the field. It's the accuracy, the height on the throw, the arc on the throw. He's a good dart throw. 
Off the play fake with time. Over the middle, has a man wide open for a first down in Holy Cross territory. It's Aaron McLean. So that was a dart. That was. That's a total dart right there. And Aaron McLean does a good job of hauling that thing in. And the pace and the tempo has now clearly picked up. So is the execution. 24 yards. They give it to Hopkins. Bounces off the tackle. Fights hard for two or three yards. Macbeth with another tackle. I tell you, it's going to be a bumpy ride back to Worcester for Nick Macbeth. He has been colliding all night long with the Huskies. No question. It'll be an ice tub tomorrow, save for Nate Hopkins as well, who's run hard for UConn. Second and seven from the Holy Cross 32. Holy Cross was offsides. No flag. Hopkins pushed back. Certainly thought a Holy Cross defender coming off the edge was early. But the officials didn't see it that way, so another tackle for Ryan Brady. Sets up third and long. Well, and to the bottom of the screen, the three wide receivers said here, they go with Beals, Mayala, and in the slot, Quaylon Skeens, who we haven't heard from tonight. Thompson in the backfield, Holy Cross showing pressure. Now Tyler backs off. Plenty of time on the play clock for Sheriffs. Here comes the snap. Now they bring pressure. One-on-one -on -one coverage complete for a first down. Mayala makes the man miss at the 15, the 10. First and goal for Connecticut. Great job recognizing one-on-one. -on -one. A great job of just hitching that thing up. Safety blitz, one-on-one. -on -one. Good stick and move there just from Hergie Mayala. Thompson driven back. So the Holy Cross player we saw headed to the locker room without his shoulder pads on was the safety Chris Riley. He is done for the evening. Be on tight end alert here if you're the Holy Cross defense. They're both in the game, 80 and 86 in blue. It's Tommy Myers, 80, Alec Bloom, 86. to Mayala, incomplete. Tremendous job by Muhammad, not giving up on that play because it looked like it was in the breadbasket for Mayala. Ali Muhammad's played a heck of a game. Look at the battle right here, ripped it out, and then did a good job of getting his body between Mayala and the football. Great work. Third and 11. Trips to the right, Mayala, who's become the favorite target here for Sheriff's top of your screen. Sheriff's looking that way. And Muhammad cannot rip this one away. Touchdown, Connecticut. It was as simple as working the one-on-one -on -one matchup between Herji Mayawa and Brian Sheriff's. You know, sometimes we complicate football, and then there are times where just pick the one-on-one -on -one guy and go make plays. Great throw, Brian Sheriffs. Another dart from Sheriffs. So Connecticut looking to go back on top with the extra point from Tarbot. And UConn leads. So... Randy Edsel makes the switch, and it's the right move. Herji Mayala with a career night, and the Huskies take a one-point lead on Holy Cross. The Katie Salva Larry, Larry thanks, and there's a look at Herji Mayala as if he didn't do enough on that drive. He's still got to get some bike work in. Take a break, young man. Dude, look at those guns. Like, seriously. Ron Burgundy would be jealous of those things. Eight catches, 100 yards, and a touchdown. Herji Mayala stepping up his game, and I think if you would have told a lot of longtime UConn football fans, Eamon, that Brian Sheriffs was going to be the guy that was going to come in and lead the Huskies to two scores and give them the lead, I think a lot of you would have told you you were silly because there just was not a lot of faith in Brian Sheriffs given what we've seen. But he has come into this game, played his tail off, he's made good throws, but more importantly, he has given this team the emotional boost they've needed to get rid of, as my old football coach would say, cranius rectus. Sometimes you just gotta call it like a coach. They had no life for two and a half quarters.
So if UConn holds on here, the first question Randy Edsel might be asked, or maybe the second or third is, who's going to be your starting quarterback against South Florida? But we have a lot of football to be played before that one. 12 minutes and two seconds left, and Peter Pouliot's taken over on his own 25. But the Holy Cross offense has lost its mojo here in the second half. Yep. I, the pressure has picked up. And the biggest thing to me is that first down, they've had problems. You know, early on in this game on first downs, they were getting positive yardage. Now it feels like they're kind of stagnant in those early downs, and I don't care who you are, you get into third and eight and longer, that's not a way to live playing college football. And it felt like they got a little conservative and sat on the lead a little bit, maybe trying to go maybe. slow and run the ball a little bit more than they were doing in the first half. But now they're trailing by one on the road with just over 12 seconds left to play in regu 12 minutes left to play in regulation. Off the play fit. High throw, catch made by Bell. The offense coordinator, Brian Roke, told us, look, Rock said, look, we're going to have to throw the ball to win. They are going to put this game into the hands and the arm of that man right there. And they should. Rookie of the year, second team All-League, first team All-League. Here's Cozier breaking into the open field, out near midfield for a first down. Cozier doing some yeoman's work here in the second half, but it starts with the big boys up front. They give him a seam. Nice job of sealing off the backside defensive end, Cole Ormsby. Cozier has done the job here in the second half. Again, it's worth repeating, a Connecticut defense going out, going without its leading returning tackler, Vontae Diggs, out with a knee injury. Foley Fotikasi ejected on the first drive of the game. And now Junior Joseph out with what appears to be a shoulder injury. Looking for Dina Nicola deep. Knocked away. Watkins with the coverage. Boy, I wonder if Peter Puglia also want that back again. Because it looked like he had man-to-man -man coverage, and Dina Colda had maybe a half a step right here. That ball's kind of inside. He floats it up a little bit. Watch this ball into the inside. If he maybe lays it out to the outside, 83 might be able to pull that thing in. Pump one way, roll the other. Throws across his body and finds his man, Montgomery. What a play. <laughs> I mean, that is. Never throw against your body, unless you're a fifth year senior and you know what you're doing. There you go, exactly right, Eamon. There you go, he nailed it. Is your coach? It's no, 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 no. Yes. You'll take it. Look at this. Perfect spiral where the receiver could catch it and protect the football. Now they roll right. High throw out of bounds. Looking for Montgomery again. Julios isn't happy with one of his wide receivers. Julios running this offense as if it were the first quarter of the game. He's taking his time. He's making his checks. There's no panic in his game. He doesn't do anything stupid with the football. So, so impressive, Peter Julios. Twins to the right. And that's where he's looking. High throw. One of his few errant throws. He had Dean Nicole in the flat, and he just missed him. Yep. If he puts it on him, it's third and it's probably third and four. Instead, it's going to be third and ten. And even you said it correctly, the one of the very few errant throws from number six tonight. Now they have not been efficient on third downs, but keep in mind they've been very, they have two huge fourth down conversions. So you would think they're in four down territory here with the ball in Connecticut territory. Five on the play clock. They get it off. Puglio steps up. Nobody open. Scrambling. Throws it deep. Just off the fingertips of Dorsey. So now Coach Gilmore has to make a decision. Do you trust your defense on fourth and ten and punt? Or do you know this might be your last chance inside Connecticut territory? What a throw! What a throw. I mean, that is utterly ridiculous. 
He's going to his left. He stops. That thing is 45 yards in the air. Look at this thing once again. Here's Peter Puyos. Man, that's 45 in the air, and it was a little high. A fourth and 10 from the Connecticut 37. They throw back. They need a block. It doesn't matter. They drop it. They try to screen to the tight end. Derek Mountain. Wide receiver screen back to the short side, and Mountain couldn't make the catch. If Mountain makes that catch, though, I think that's a first down. They had that. They had people down the field. They had a hat on a hat. Let's take a look at it right here. 82 lined up as your tight end to the left side. And there's your throwback. He's got to get that block there that he probably would have gotten. He had a chance. There's no question. But you got to catch it first. And now the people remaining at Pratt & Whitney Stadium are jumping at Bryant Sheriffs leading this offense. So with a one-point lead, Connecticut takes over. They run it up the gut with Hopkins. And I wonder about this now. UConn up tempo, up tempo, a couple touchdowns. Now we're going to slow it down. This isn't who they want to be. Right back to Hopkins. The Holy Cross has had enough number 11 running it down their throat. Ahmad Tyler with the tackle. So now this is where your point, you want to get conservative. Now you're facing third and five. They picked it up on third downs. They've made their last two after starting one for nine. And this one would be huge to keep the offense on the field after stopping Holy Cross on downs. Bunch set to the left. Sheriffs looks the other way, and it's dropped. Good coverage there. Went right back to Mayala, but Akeem Walcott broke it up. So UConn goes three and out. I don't know why you take your foot off the accelerator right here, but a great job by Akeem Walcott, knowing that he's the man-to-man -to, -man to one side. And he does a good job of getting the hand in there. But again, if you want to be something on offense, then do it and try to be consistent. It was working. I know you have a one-point lead, but still, you got to go and put points on the board. So another punt for the Huskies as Holy Cross is going to get it right back. Unless Unless they drop it. Di Nicola, though, falls on it. So the Crusaders live to play another four downs. Peter Puglios and company looking to regain the lead when we return. UConn football on SNY is brought to you by People's United Bank N.A. See what know-how can do for you. By UConn Health, official health care provider of UConn Athletics. And by Bob's Discount Furniture. Home of the world-famous Bobopedic Memory Foam Mattress. Why sp spend hundreds more? The official furniture store of the Yukon Huskies. So here's an opportunity for Peter Puglios to write another chapter in his great career at Holy Cross. Four-time captain. Got a medical redshirt after getting hurt last year. Broke his leg against Dartmouth. 83 yards for a touchdown, but of course a field goal puts him on top as well. Legal procedure. False start. Offense, number 82, five-yard penalty, first down. Rough last few minutes for Mr. Mountain. Dropped the screen. Now he moved early. So 10th penalty of the night for the Crusaders. Backs him up five yards to their own 12. That's a killer. Why? First down. Now you're in first and 15. You wonder why you don't convert on third down? It's because you're going backwards on first now. Mountain makes the grab and makes the first down. So he says, take that, Mr. Announcer guy. Wow. Shut up, fatty. Look at that catch. What a strike from Peter Boyles, though. Woo. I mean, six has been 
blow you away good tonight for Holy Cross. They said, look, if we're going to win this one, Peter's going to have to have a night. Off the play fake. Hits his man in stride for a first down. Ball comes out at the end. Still loose. Connecticut ball. Was he down? Bell makes the grab. Nope, that's a fumble. Wow. Critical error right there from Blaze Bell. Marche Terry with the hit. The movement on the field is a catch and fumble. They're coming by UConn. Paul Zukis is our replay official. Certainly didn't see anything from those first couple of looks that would indicate it needs to be overturned. Well, and disappointing for that young man, Blaze Bell, UConn. who has played a whale of a game. And it is all confirmed, and it is UConn's football. Wow, that's a big play in this game. So now, they were conservative the last time they had the ball with 8.27 to go. Now they're looking to throw. Sheriffs all day. Pumps. Looking for his deep man. Has my Oliver. He overshoots him. Had him. Wide open. I'm sure they're going to go back and look at that and say, you got to find a way to make that connection there. Wow. Great separation by Herji Mayala. Missed opportunity there for UConn. Now they swing it out to Newsom. Has blockers in front of him. First down and then some inside the 30. Still on his feet. All the way down to the 12. Arkell Newsom. Showing off the Jets. Teddy Caps is down on the play for Holy Cross. Look at number eight in blue, Aaron McLean, blocking a guy down the field, five yards down the field. He's engaged with the safety, Ahmad Taylor. That gives Arkell Newsom the initial crease. And 22 coming through here in the fourth quarter for UConn. And now a little life. Look at the difference. Look at Rhett Lashley there. Even the difference, he's talking to his offense. Much more into it. Caps is a junior out of Long Island with the Chaminade High School. Good to see him get up and able to walk off on his own power. You know, Teddy Caps is, is a part of a group of defensive linemen. If you look at Holy Cross last year, 26 sacks, 20 of those left the program. Caps is regarded as one of the better pass rushers on this team. Part of that group charged to kind of make up for all those sacks that walked out the door at graduation. Now that group is hoping to force a field goal attempt as we approach eight minutes left. Well, you, let's let's remember, too, at 21-20, you can still go for two if you're Holy Cross and tie the game, so all is not lost yet. Newsom to the left. Gets down to the 10. Let's check in with Taylor. Amen. Coach Edsel just came over to his defense and gave a great motivational speech. He said, I told you guys to play your butt off. He said, nobody took that play off. That's why we recovered the fumble. Everybody ran to the ball. Nobody got tired. Everybody hustled. He said, that is what's going to win them the game. You play until the clock hits 0-0, zero, zero, guys. Turn it back over to the offense. Working hard to get inside the five is Quavon Skates. So that'll bring up third and one. One of the best spots to be in in football. Third and one where you can reset downs inside the five-yard line. Both tight ends out on the field. Bloom and Myers. Hopkins in the backfield. Give us to Hopkins. And he gets the first down. So first and goal, Connecticut.
now it's just about punching it in the end zone here if you're UConn. Doesn't matter where you do it, fast or slow. Find a way to get in the end zone. I got a funny feeling they're going to run right up the rear end of the tight end, 80. Hopkins up the middle. Touchdown, Connecticut. So in less than a quarter of actual play, Brian Sheriffs has led the UConn offense to three touchdowns. Fantastic job by Sheriffs. Good job by the big boys up front. Even better job by Nate Hopkins of getting low, finding ways around legs to get in the end zone. And now the all-important PAT. Ramsey Holder. And he missed it. So it remains a touchdown deficit. Holy Cross does not need to worry about going for two, but we're a long way from there. But what a night for Nate Hopkins. Redshirt freshman out of Texas. Take a look at the touchdown once again from Nate Hopkins. Good job at the point of attack. Nice job in the middle. And then, you know, Eamon, you and I have called a lot of college football games over the past couple of years. What we just saw right there is a real epidemic in college football right now, is it not? In terms of guys with big PATs, it has burned UConn in the past. And it doesn't matter the kicker, but special teams, it's... It's amazing the conversions of PATs in football nowadays. So you take a look at the quarterback comparison and you give Randy Edsel credit for not, you know, being sort of, well, I made Pindell my starter. I got to see what he can do. I got to stick there. He went to the bullpen in the opener and Sheriffs has responded. Well, just the snap in the offense, the pace, the speed, the execution. There were times where it, it felt like David Pindell couldn't lean on his teammates and say I need more out of you because he's unsure about himself whereas Brian Sheriffs is a senior he's been here he's been through the battles he'll get in someone's keister if he has to but he hasn't had to it was his play that sparked this football team right away Muhammad takes a knee so now this Holy Cross offense Needs to rediscover its mojo. Last possession. It looked like they're in great shape. Go back to this whole Connecticut defense that is undermanned right now. Foley Fotokasi ejected early for this targeting hit on the opening drive. Now Junior Joseph, number 11, a veteran linebacker, is out with an injury. And Vontae Diggs was already a no-go out after knee surgery. They expect to get him back next week against South Florida, but the defense has been up to the challenge. Yeah, they've done a good job at Peter Puglio's 30th, 53-18, a touchdown. Does he have enough around him to win? High throw, Di Nicola makes the grab. So good job by Di Nicola going up in traffic to make that catch. Good job of looking it in. Here's Guild. He's tackled for a loss. That's Britton, Chris Britton. Well, when you get that negative play on first down, put yourself in second and 11. They got to get a chunk here to be able to get it down the field. He's got his man open, and he puts it in there perfectly for Dorsey. What a throw. Big time throw. So they're in Connecticut territory. And here you go. Peter Puglios getting them up on the line of scrimmage. 25 seconds on the play clock. He ain't wasting time. Rolling to the right. That's too high for Dorsey. Well out of bounds. 
Well, that was throw 52, I do believe, either 52 or 53. So I can completely understand for Puyos why some of those balls might start to sail on him. You know, I don't care how much you practice or how many times you huck it in practice, you're making 53 game throws, and now the adrenaline of the football game and maybe getting a win here at Pratt & Whitney Stadium has got to carry you through. Twins to the right. Five on the play clock. Back to Guild up the middle. He breaks three for a first down. Inside the 20. Gabe Guild with a burst. Look at the beef up front. They're just running. I mean, that's just zone to the left right there. And the only thing Guild is doing is picking his spot, hitting the hole, and running through it. That's the old everybody steps to the left. We're going to run some zone. Running back, you read it, do your thing. Looking right. Throws behind his man and incomplete. I wonder if Puyos is getting a little tired. He's got to try to find a way to fight through. Ball starting to sail on him a little bit. Had one high, one a little wide. And there's head coach Tom Gilmore right there, looking at the clock, managing the situation. As you see, Holy Cross two timeouts, UConn all three. Walker in the backfield. Bell, bottom of your screen to the left. Here comes pressure from Connecticut. Picked up for now to Bell across the middle. Down to the 13. Bell on the crosser, right behind the linebacker, Santana Sterling. Puts you in a manageable third and four. They have not been good on third down. No. Dean Nicola, who's been his security blanket and his main target all night long, is in the slot to the left. They have two running backs, Walker and Gill. They have not shown this look often tonight. Bumble. Four on the play clock. Move the pocket. They get it off. Looking for Dean Nicola. It's covered. Here comes pressure. He throws it away. So Connecticut. Had an idea, he was looking for number 83, so for Puyos and Holy Cross, it most likely comes down to this. Fourth and four, with 3.53 left to go. You could, of course, kick the field goal and trust your defense with those two timeouts. Yep. And he's sending out Mountain. And he's going to go for it. They took up a lot of time off that play clock to get the personnel out there, so you wonder if you'd burn a timeout just to get everyone on the same page on fourth and four. Five on the play clock, under center. Off the play fake. Pulios is going to run it. No chance. Cam Stapleton with the hit. Boy, big collision along the sidelines right there. Pulios going for the run. Take a look at Cam Stapleton on the big hit. Uh, there's some helmet contact, but he gets him. See, he kind of turns to the side, gives him the shoulder. I mean, look, if we're going to break down every play like it's the Zapruder film but on they helmet, do. The helmet contact, but the, but well, that's, they, the, that's, that's they, the emphasis. They, they do to some point, but, you know, Stapleton turned his shoulder. He tried to hit well, him with the I side understand. there. It just, it, it feels like it's okay, we're gonna, we gotta break them all down when there was no real intent to hit him with the crown of the helmet. But, the other, here's the other thing though. Okay, when is a quarterback not a quarterback? Because you know that's a He's huge a runner, point yeah. there. He's not defenseless at that point Correct. as a runner. Yep, and I think that's a, a big part of it. I will say this, just going back to the play. I'm surprised he was under center and I'm surprised he ran it. I, I mean, I, that came out of nowhere, Amy. I did not see that play coming at all I, you know wonder if you could think it all over again if you take that time out to really think about what play you wanted to run 
But of course, with the two timeouts left, they could stop it now, clock, and get the ball back here if they come up with a stop. This is where UConn, bigger, stronger, faster. They need to get this done. Certainly running at Brady and Macbeth has not been the recipe for success tonight for another tackle for Brady. You wonder if you're Holy Crossway, you don't take a timeout here to stop the clock. But Amateur head coach in the booth? I'm just asking well, you. No, you're the no, 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 no. So I'm, I'm getting to. With with two minutes and rolling, you figure that you know UConn's had some issues with the punter. You get the ball around the 40-yard line, you move it 30 yards, you want one, not two to be able to give yourself a chance to clock it and get your field goal unit on the field. Field position matters. Of course, you have to start start with the stop. Here comes pressure up the middle. Sheriffs, where are they gonna spot it? A very generous spot for Connecticut. Wow. Whoa, wow. Holy uh, if cow. If I'm Coach Gilmore, I'm raising it. You, you know what, to out. review that. And he just ran out on the field. Well, he to took call a timeout. Time I'd want that reviewed, that spot. Yes, let's see. Timeout. I mean, they're Holy giving cross. that to him where he yeah, left his timeout. feet to make the catch. Be a 30 second timeout. I mean, his his feet landed on the on the blue of the A, the American Conference logo on the field there. Line to gain, I believe, was the 25. Right, right at the yes, sir. 25. So where he takes off. I mean, that's, I mean yeah. that's a pretty generous spot. Agreed. I think what they're giving him is when he was in the air, the whole he caught, like he right. was hovering above that 25-yard line, I guess, when he caught it. But uh, I don't know about that. That's a, man, that's a tough one right and there. That's a huge yard because there's no way Randy Edsel's going for it on fourth and one on his own 24. Agreed. But there's no headset. away does not get out of bounds but Holy Cross can only stop the clock one more time well you got to give Brian Sheriff's credit name and this guy came into the game and this UConn offense for almost three quarters was lifeless inconsistent no emotion here comes Brian Sheriff's and they, they just pressed on the gas and three straight touchdowns, and here we are, UConn, a couple minutes away from a very hard-fought win. 20 unanswered points in the second half here for the Huskies. And it started when they made the switch at quarterback. Let's now take a look at our drive of the game presented by Subaru of New England and Brian Sheriffs leading the way to UConn taking the lead. Pretty amazing. There's the ball down the field. He makes the connection to Aaron McLean. Back out once again, this time to Herji Mayala. Back to Mayala one more time. There's your drive of the game. And it was all because number four, Brian Sheriffs, who at times really struggled last year, to the point to where they pulled the red shirt off of Donovan up. Williams. One minute full time. And up. he comes into the game for David Pindell and leads him to three straight touchdowns. Talk about a tale of two halves. Let's take a look at tonight's People's United Bank player of the game, and certainly you got to start with the switch of quarterback. Well, Brian Sheriffs comes in and lights this offense up. 9 of 13, 124 yards and a touchdown. They respected, Holy Cross did. Sheriff's ability to run the football and helped in some of the zone read game. And look, Brian Sheriff's just did a good job of taking advantage of one-on-one -on -one situations and allowing Nate Hopkins to help him out as well. Nate Hopkins, a whale of a game. Hopkins, the Connecticut player with three rushing touchdowns since Lyle McCombs in 2011. 
But I think we've seen on both sides of the ledger tonight, Holy Cross and UConn, the importance of the quarterback in running both of these offenses. It'll be a lot for Connecticut to work on and improve on to get ready for South Florida, but they'll take the W, and Randy Edsel will improve to 1-0 and in his second stint. He's already the winningest coach here in Connecticut history, so he'll just tack on to that record. But uh, there's going to be a lot of questions this week as we take a look at a tough schedule here. You to see a lot of ats there in September. Yeah. Uh, but who's going to be your quarterback against South Florida? How healthy is Junior Joseph? Will Vontae Diggs be back? Obviously, Fatou Kasi was ejected, so that there's no carryover for there. But they escaped here. Give them credit. The defense forced the key turnover and got the stop on fourth down, too. Well, when you look at the openers the past couple of years, Maine, Villanova, now Holy Cross, it's been a close shave, but they found ways to win. So Randy Edsel with a successful return. He gets the win, holds off Holy Cross after the Crusaders gave him all they could handle and then some in the first half. But Randy Edsel more than happy to head to the locker room and celebrate a victory for his Connecticut team. It's the man of the hour right now. No one really expected Connecticut to be forced to go to the backup quarterback, but Sheriffs was pointed to, and he responded. So our final score here, Connecticut 27, Holy Cross 20. For Andy Gresh, Taylor Rooks, and our entire crew, I'm Eamon McEnany. We now send you back to our New York studio as you join Larry Ridley and Sean Mulcahy for the People's United Bank UConn football postgame show.